the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. It's a great privilege to bring the word of the Lord to us every time. And see, the most powerful thing about the word of God is its ability to produce results. If the word of God did not have the ability to produce results, we would be wasting our time. I just want you to imagine for one minute that everything you have believed were a lie. That would be a complete waste of time. Years invested in the pursuit of the spirit only to find out it's a lie. But we thank the Lord because that which is written here is true. It can change lives. You hear the testimonies all the time. And tonight we will be changed in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I think a lot and one of the things that I think about is the level of transformation and impact that God has granted unto us as individuals and as a ministry to be able to communicate a dimension of spiritual reality to help build and strengthen the body of Christ and I think it's a great privilege you see the more you know God the more you see how easy it is for him to do without you are we together the more you know God the more you have an encounter with his might the more you see how small and inconsequential you are in the overall equation of his will and then you see how much is a privilege for him sometimes to have to wait on you and wait on your will to cooperate with him before he moves. Are we together? And our lives um, are a reflection of such a testimony that it looks as though it is difficult for God to do without us although he has all the power and he seems to always patiently carry us along his program. And it's a privilege for us to represent his purposes not only in this city but in many regards around different areas of this nation and around the world it's a pleasure and it's a privilege and we thank him let us never forget these things there's so many people thousands of people following us right now from different parts of the world we are here different people coming from different places um you know sometimes we get so used to how easy the anointing of the spirit can make things become that we think it is so for everyone and sometimes we get so familiar with the dealings the operation of god's anointing that when we take our time to lavishly give him thanks like this it looks like a waste of time but then the success and everything that you see in our lives and as a ministry is built on laws and one of it is a heart that is passionately committed to saying thank you are we together if if this is all we do today as boring as it may seem as unspiritual as it may seem and as spiritually basic as it may seem for many this is the key that has kept god in touch with many mighty people they know how to go back and say lord thank you your grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. It's your grace, your grace shines on me. Sing it from your heart. Your grace, your grace. I'm nothing without 
privilege of being the ones to partner with you in birthing such magnificent testimonies in the lives and the destinies of people it is not within the power of any man to change any life but with God all things are possible and Lord we thank you for being the secret the mystery the law and the reason behind our success and the lifting why should I care what people say? They don't know what you mean to me. They don't know what you mean to me. Truly they don't know what you mean to me. They don't know what you mean to me, but I'm glad I know what you mean to me. I'm glad I know what you mean to me. You are the end. You are the air that I breathe. Your very presence that is living in me. Just let me pour out my heart for a few moments before His presence. You are my day. Your very word that is spoken to me, oh, oh, oh. and now I'm desperate for you. a song is the truth and I'm desperate for you I'm lost without you Shabakata Labarato This is part of the meeting it's an atmosphere for you
saying thank you to the one who has made us all that we are. We sincerely acknowledge you. You are faithful. Above and beyond our limitations and weaknesses, you are faithful. You have chosen us and you have put your name upon our lives and destinies. You see the wonder, the wonder you have made out of our lives. We are deeply grateful. We are deeply grateful. We are deeply grateful. We are deeply grateful. Deeply grateful. Deeply grateful. Deeply grateful. Sabako takasi. Zikoto sukoto kabara. Take your place, 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 take your
Can you just hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit? Just hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Just make contact. Oh, like a bride waiting for her groom. Even so, come. Even so, come. Even so, come. Kaparakota shabrandi geratu sata. Shaka te prate te bere te fras kata bara da bara da ba. Bena na ma na ma so ta na 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 ba. Jena <laughs> Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. There is something that will leave heaven to this place. Keep praying. Keep praying, keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Rakata parada balada 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 Sopra 
Hallelujah. We are going to pray one more time. If you are sick in your body, just lay your hands there. There is a strong healing anointing in this place right now. You are sick anywhere in your body. Lay your hands. Lay your hands. I see the power of God about to touch people in a few minutes. Miracles of healing. the lord is healing migraine headache right now there are people suffering from intense migraine headache the power of god is touching you right now right now right now right now i'm seeing um i'm seeing a lady having severe like like menstrual cramps severe menstrual cramps right now as i speak the power of god is touching 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 that pain leaves right now that pain leaves right now there is a spirit that has been walking with a lady you literally feel as if there is a man walking by your side that spirit is leaving you right now by the power of the Holy Ghost that spirit is leaving you right now this is Zion the city of the Lord there's someone your voice for a while your voice has been unable to be clear it's like there's something hooking you you're going to feel like fire on your throat right now right now and your voice will come back to normal right now right now hotness of the body that's what the lord is telling me father we give you all the glory hotness of the body hotness of the body is living right now there is someone you brought your mother your mother is in this place she's been unable to sleep for a long time she can't even sleep but right now the power of god is coming upon her and that devil is giving way right now 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 there's someone you have a boil like a boil in your nose right inside your nose the power of god is touching it not only will it be healed it will disappear right away you will touch it and you will not feel anything right now the lord is touching the lord is touching the lord is touching i'm seeing a river in the realm of the spirit that's what i'm seeing flowing into this place a river is a river of miracles many will be swept by that river is a river that flows from the love and the throne of god it's a river bringing healing bringing healing bringing healing there are there are miracles going on healing miracles hallelujah hallelujah there's a spectacular miracle that the lord wants to do for many people hallelujah i'm seeing a group of people in the realm of the spirit you used to hear god in profound dimensions but from the beginning of this year something happened to your hearing and it's an attack from the gate of hell now please pay attention i'm speaking by the spirit it's an attack from darkness upon your hearing and it's like something has closed you some of you don't even know you are part of it i'm about to pray for you 
because that that prophetic dimension you need it to hear what i want to teach you tonight you need it there are some dimensions of spiritual communication that you cannot understand it scientifically and the lord is asking me to pray therefore father i stretch my hands on your people every gate of the prophetic that has been closed every gate every gate the hearing ear let that grace be released right now the hearing ear the hearing ear Sata many of you will hear the sound of angels instantly instantly inside outside those following on our social media platform the lord is opening the lord is opening prophetic dimensions the sharing of the spirit authentic sharing not nonsense an authentic hearing shakataba sheketekata rakata pakotosia for some of you it is restoration 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 and what happened to your hearing that you no longer hear the sounds of the spirit like fire is coming on the ear of people fire fire I see fire falling on people fire a restoration of hearing a restoration of hearing a restoration of hearing lift your hands there are people here your dreams used to be prophetic but it was and my God said, something is happening to your spirit man the hand of God is coming upon your spirit man the hand of God coming upon your spirit man right now dreams 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 shaka patata stretch dreams where you will understand the counsel of God in the visions of the night the counsel of God in the visions of the night the counsel of God in the visions of the night hallelujah hallelujah the last thing i'll pray for before we sit down is sensitivity listen let me tell you if you lack sensitivity in this season and in this time you will never be able to be in sync with what god is saying sensitivity is like breathing in the realm of the spirit to be able to understand the impulses of the spirit and align yourself with what the spirit is doing and saying he said the sons of Issachar they had an understanding of the time and they knew what Israel ought to do I want to pray for you there is a grace that makes men sensitive many of us used to be sensitive especially our sisters something has happened to your sensitivity but in the name of Jesus Christ I pray this is a mountain of the Lord's house where grace is sufficient grace is sufficient right now i stretch my hands may that grace begin to fall on men and women let it fall let it fall sensitivity discernment sensitivity discernment sensitivity discernment to the speakings of the spirit sensitivity discernment to the speakings of the spirit. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. You were mighty on your throne. Hey! Mighty on your throne. You were mighty in this world. Mighty on your throne. You were mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne. You were mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne. You were mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne. Mighty in my life.
Father, we pray that you go ahead and do everything you intend for us to experience tonight. Right beyond our dimensions, right beyond our perceptions, right beyond our yieldedness. And oh God, I pray that you activate strange things in the lives of people. Strange things in the lives of people. Please sit down carefully if you can. Tonight will be a night of strange impartations. If you can, just sit down and let your heart be open. Let your spirit be sensitive. No carelessness, no distraction. Please. Koinonia is a place of impartation. You need impartation to rise and step into your prophetic destiny. There are times that certain things need to be activated. Nothing can cover for noise and stories. You must come into the reality of certain experiences and impartation is one of the platforms that can bring you into those realities. Once again, I welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. Tonight is a night of strange impartations. And there is a reason why God is doing it. There is a reason why God is bringing us to this dimension of impartations. It's not just for nothing. Listen, in the course of my teaching, I'll be very brief tonight. But in the course of my teachings, there will be different kinds of anointings just coming in. You get this in Koinonia. Koinonia is a place where things are activated. And so when your word comes, it will come upon you. Yours is just to be sensitive. As I teach, there will be dispensing of graces. Dispensing of graces. Be sensitive. Don't just hear what I'm saying. A time will come. Yours will come upon you. So it's going to be a noisy meeting. Don't worry. You will hear what I'm saying. But as I teach, people will receive things. Will receive things. Inside, outside, everywhere. You will receive things. Shabratu sakuratu saprita shidahari. Listen, the church must pay the price for a genuine anointing that will really be able to bring God to the scene. The church must pay the price for a genuine, authentic anointing that will be able to bring true results for people. The only way we can become a revelation of the Christ, I'm telling you this, is to contend for a dimension in the spirit that affords us the privilege of hosting superior dimensions of the presence and the power of God. Talk is cheap. It's easy to make a lot of noise in the body of Christ. It's easy to stand upon many doctrinal and theological dissertations communicating the things that we believe should be but in the final analysis people need to experience the reality of the kingdom and i think this is where a lot of we pastors have not done justice for people a lot of us are speaking prophets a lot of us are mighty pastors and apostles and prophets and bishops we can communicate spiritual reality. But the challenge is when it comes to the practical demonstration of the essence of our communication. We try to create all kinds of theological excuses. So there are so many things we teach that God is. There are so many things we teach that God can do. There are so many realities we we whet the appetite of God's people by opening them up to the possibilities that can be in the spirit. But it is so frustrating when people's appetites are to the apex, yet we sustain the power and the life to experientially draw them into those experiences. So we teach on healing. 
we teach on different kinds of healing different dimensions of healing and then in the final analysis the sick person still goes back sick the cancer patient still goes back with, with their cancers we are happy about dispensing theologically arranged communications but the bible says listen the bible tells us that the gospel listen is not just about the excellency of speech right but the demonstration of power to the end that the faith of people will not be founded upon the wisdom of men but upon the power of god no matter what you say about god if you cannot bring him to the scene for me to relate with his might you have wasted my time i may applaud you for your intelligence and your ability to be flawless in your research but let me tell you something in the final analysis people need to be transformed demons are not a theory they are real sicknesses are not a theory they are real oppression is not a theory it is real poverty is not a theory it is real only preaching largely are theories blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who comes in the name of our god hallelujah the lord showed me a vision a few days ago and in that vision i saw so many people in the church weary and tired that's what i saw in the vision including pastors i saw people seated and stranded no message because everything to be preached have been preached i saw members frustrated and humiliated and the lord began to reveal to me that it is a strategy please pay attention it's a prophetic teaching tonight it's a strategy by the kingdom of darkness because when you study when you listen to my teaching why revivals fail i shared with you there a strategy with which satan uses to defeat many believers satan will never strike you at your point of strength he knows that all men are human although we are divine there is a human component to us so the moment you are doing the work of the kingdom advancing the purposes of the kingdom fervent in prayer strong in the world the devil will not attack you he knows that there is one thing that is common to all men is called exhaustion the reality of our humanity that no matter how powerful you are no matter how anointed you are a time must come when the reality of your humanity will meet up with you it is at that point that men are separated from the boys it is at that point that only those who sustain a system in the spirit to continue will stand i saw that vision i saw faces i recognized and i could not believe that such great men could be weary now you see a man of god can be weary and you will not know because don't mistaking the grace upon a man to dispense truth and his personal growth and progress there are two different things i can be as dry and weary as whatever but when i stand upon this pulpit the anointing that comes with my office will make me act so flawless you will not know that i'm at the verge of giving up are we together most times we mistaking the grace and the unction that accompanies the office of a man to mean that because that grace looks ever fresh ever flowing in power that it necessarily means the person is highly motivated and happy no there are times i've been so tired physically tired going for meetings and i i can sometimes it looks like i can't stand for 15 minutes but the moment i hold that mic i no longer become joshua selman an apostolic anointing comes and i can stand for hours now you may mistake in my strength to mean that i am not weak do you know sometimes when I get back home, even to eat becomes a problem? Are we together? 
so i saw weariness in that vision i saw many people gassing out in prayer literally like a meter just diminishing i saw people gassing out in their world level and one of the areas that i saw people crying is the area of not getting results financially and otherwise it was frustrating people i saw quarrels between people fathers mothers different people i saw pastors fighting themselves and i was wondering what is the meaning of all this nonsense and the lord told me this is what the devil wants to bring he's taking advantage of the economic tide that is sweeping the nations as a tool and he wants to wreak havoc in the lives of people are we together part of the advantages of a true apostolic ministry is to have an eye that sees and the ability to perceive the impulses of the spirit part time and communicate to people the realities that are the emphasis of God for that moment that's why we pray for perception because there are many of us if your perception were alive you would have picked the signal let me tell you something it's important to gauge your spiritual growth don't let men clap you into spiritual mediocrity what are you an MOG for when you cannot perceive the impulses of the spirit what are you a campus fellowship president for or a pastor or an apostle when the things of the spirit happen discussions are going on in the realm of the spirit and your presence cannot be registered because you have not sustained an ability to rise beyond your flesh and understand the speakings of the spirit hallelujah ministry is not all about preaching but the ability to perceive the impulses of people when God makes you a leader he commits unto you the destinies of people it's your responsibility now to be in sync with the spirit Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 says I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower it says and I will see what the Lord will say not hear what he will say see perceive conceive what he's saying When I saw this, my heart really broke. Especially when I saw faces I could recognize. I saw that people had gas out. Truly. Mothers who used to have a very strong prayer altar. I saw the thing going down. Usually it starts through carelessness. Here and there. Even if you don't pray one week, it doesn't matter. There's grace for me. I'll come again. And then before you know it, completely void of power. And you know the interesting thing? No matter how bad you are, the devil will never strike you. He's smart. If he strikes you, you will go for a retreat very fast. And you will come back. So he will allow you to keep moving. There is a threshold level. It's like a cage in the spirit. You keep going down. He will not strike keep going down one day he will aim at you and if not for the mercy of God and the prophetic he will hit you bad blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed is he who comes in the name of God? Hallelujah. I will share with you three keys the Lord revealed to me. That if not managed, will strengthen the power of darkness to cause the havoc that it plans to cause. Take note of this month, July. You see, this month, July, there is, there is intense warfare going on in the realm of the spirit those who are sensitive know those who are not sensitive just assume and move carelessly and foolishly until they become victims this month mark this month july you see is a month of intense spiritual building you need to build capacity for the months to come victory is assured but the strength of many will be tested in the months to come you will see this happen the strength of men of god the strength of people, their, their spiritual capacity will be tested. 
and only those who have built fortification in the spirit the bible says for us to redeem the time take advantage of the time are we together so the devil is attacking the prayer lives of people dramatically you see he's not attacking it by stopping you from praying i will show you the things the first thing that the devil is using to sabotage the prophetic advancement of believers and the church listen is exhaustion the reality of the weariness of our bodies the reality of that weariness exhaustion psychological exhaustion physical exhaustion are we together so when people gas out they come to a point where it no longer makes sense to wait upon the Lord and trust the Lord because many hopes have been disappointed many dreams seemingly look like they are shattered people look at their experience versus their prophecy and it does not match and so many are fainting including the great ones who should stand to strengthen many people and there's nothing to be embarrassed there that's why God is opening us up to it so that we will rise is God blessing us exhaustion weariness that fatigue that spiritual fatigue where you want to study your Bible and you just look at it and it looks like a burden you want to open your Bible and study it looks like a burden you buy books but you don't read them you buy DVDs but you can't watch them there seems to be a spirit that takes advantage of our humanity and our weariness. So, you are buying books. You are buying tapes. You are downloading messages. Those around will think you are taking advantage of them. But you know that it's been a long time since you made contact with these resources. Not because you are not of God. It's called weariness. Exhaustion. Even the young men shall faint. And the youth will utterly fall says that's the first thing that i saw that the devil is taking advantage of to destroy people just destroy people just destroy people the second thing that the lord revealed to me is financial limitation write it down i saw a lot of people whose focus had been distracted and the reason was because there were no resources i saw God, churches groups people even people who used to participate actively in the house of god prayer meetings prayer groups the reality of the stress and strain that lack of finances brings a lot of people started asking themselves questions look we're, we're humans let's go and, and and solve our family needs first and it's a plot it's a plot by darkness are we together where believers go to pray and they can't pray because of financial weariness and even if they pray the entire circumference of their prayer is lamentation and a plea for open heavens you may not realize it but it's a strategy it's a strategy listen let me tell you something satan weighs the governments of nations like a treasure on a balance and manipulates them according to his desire this thing called mammon is satan's weapon of mass destruction mammon mammon that spirit the only spirit that jesus taught that you can worship either him or that spirit he never said satan he said you cannot serve two masters so in any way your servanthood must be registered either to god or to mama hallelujah in that vision i saw people losing jobs companies downsizing people there are not many times you hear me speak prophetically like this but you write it and see i saw it happening to people are we together several people confused even do you know that pastors and churches went down financially because their members
didn't have the means, you know, offerings and tithes and all of that. And it was a weariness to people. And subtly, the teachings about spiritual growth, the teachings about empowerment, intimacy, encounter, began to diminish. Because the pastors were forced to have to continue talking about finances. It became as though it was the only key that would have to keep the people coming to the churches. Are we together? When I saw this thing, my heart dropped. And I said, my God, what is this? You have to do something about this nonsense. Because the devil wants to take advantage of the economic tide that is sweeping Africa. And that spirit that is sweeping Nigeria. That bitterness, that offense. Many people no longer pay attention to God. You meet somebody and talk to him about spiritual growth. And the person will even tell you to go away. Why? Because... We have said it unapologetically in this ministry that when your finances is not secured, it will affect your spiritual life. There's no confusion about it. I hope you believe what I'm sharing with you. Oh, please, you better do. Please, you better do. Because it will happen. The third thing I saw was... It's like flies. You know how house flies? Like a swarm of flies. Now there are times I've seen these things prophetically and I've shared them here over. But I saw a swarm of flies just coming across regions. Ah, and I looked at it and the Lord took my mind back to the plague. One of the plague that happened in the days of Moses. When those, those swamp of flies came around and began to consume people. And I had in my spirit the ministry of the devourer. Manifesting as sicknesses. Manifesting as tragic events. And ultimately death. I saw this thing. Rampant manifestation of mysterious sicknesses. That cannot be diagnosed in hospitals. They will check you with machines and say nothing is, is happening. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed are you, for you come in the name of our God. I'm not a prophet of doom. But I saw the tears in Nigeria in the month of September. It was almost unbearable. I'm not, just listen to me, I've not finished preaching. I'm not a prophet of doom. But I saw it was bad. Economically and otherwise. It was, it was like this country was completely clueless and at a point of a mess. I saw people being... Um, what do they call it? Laid off from work. Completely laid off. Husbands, wives, laid off. Their services were no longer needed. In different sectors, including government sectors. They downsized people. Because they needed to accommodate what was happening. Are we together? I saw an increase in crime rate. Theft. Stealing. Including stealing people. Not just stealing things, stealing people. Why is God revealing this? To scare you? No. God is revealing this to strengthen you. He will never bring a prophecy without a strategy. Just keep following. There is always an exemption for the church. But the problem most times is we don't pay attention. There are people who hear what I'm saying now. I'm, I'm sorry, especially for elderly people. They just shut down and say, all these idiots talking again. And then until it happens, and then we become victims of situations and circumstances. You see, let me tell you something. Prophecy, prophecy in its purest form was designed not just to give people, to make people privy to something that will happen the most important part of prophecy is the strategy for exemption not what will happen 
the strategy for exemption any true prophet that brings a word from the lord especially if it's a word that is on the negative side if it came from god god must be able to speak to his people and say this is a strategy you can choose it especially for certain things that are written judgments you cannot pray them away but there is a system like the flood of noah there was a system that was built called the ark like the passing of the angel of death upon egypt the mystery of the blood of the lamb and the passover right it was the mystery of exemption but you see the church we we have this ugly mentality which came from a misguided understanding of what the new testament teaches i can relate with god i don't need to hear anybody leave me alone if it's so god will speak to me if god has not spoken to me i will not listen let me tell you something listen i was teaching the school of ministry students our spiritual growth is based on our personal relationship with the lord jesus christ but the advancement of the kingdom is based on covenants you have to understand this your spiritual growth and my spiritual growth is based on my personal encounter my knowledge of who god is his ways and that's how i grow in the old testament it used to be through prophets and mediums but now the bible tells us that jesus has come as a mediator he's opened the new and living way to all of us we can now access god directly in terms of spiritual growth but the advancement of god's kingdom is not general god finds men and enters a covenant with those men to represent his dealings in a particular dimension and every time God wants to deal with a territory in that dimension, it must come through those channels. They are called spiritual tribes. They represent the communication of God's purposes in a dimension. So when you talk about faith, every time God wants to bring his speakings as regards the word of faith, there are spiritual channels he has entered a personal covenant with and aligned them to be able to communicate his purposes in that respect. Bishop Oyedeko, Kenneth Copeland, you can trace that spiritual tribe and they represent his communications in that regard. Are we together? There are other dimensions when the spirit of revival wants to fall upon the nation. There are people who represent the spiritual tribe that communicates that reality to the world. It's not general so your tapping into that possibility only becomes on the strength of your alignment with what god is doing when god wants to come in in the area of finances and prosperity i know that everyone will be blessed but there are people who have a personal covenant with god that represent his speakings in that regard you will never ignore their ministry and hear the current dealings of the spirit as far as that is concerned so the advancement of the kingdom it's not based on personal relationship it's based on covenants god calls a man called abraham the first man in the bible who showed us that men can walk by faith with god are we together he is god's type of faith the only reason why we can tap into the possibilities of god as far as the blessing is concerned is on the strength of the covenant that god entered with one man called abraham are we together when god wanted to salvage a nation he used one man called moses entered a personal covenant with moses that afforded moses an unusual access to god beyond his personal spiritual growth because moses himself did not make the cut to the promised land how be it based on that covenant to an extent that although moses may have failed spiritually in the book of jude an angel came to carry his body and satan still wanted the dead body because they represent systems they are not just human beings they are systems elijah was a man who represented god's system god's covenant of reformation god's covenant of of um forerunning revivals he's called elijah the tishbite are we together so by the time you allow people to begin to corrupt your mind 
and say don't make it look like only some people can hear God no the idea is not a show of superiority the idea is an election by grace where men have become like trees they are like spiritual vines and your connection to them is how you are able to tap into certain possibilities I've shared it with us here Abraham gave birth to Ishmael with Hagar is that true Hagar was crying Ishmael was crying but the Bible says God had the voice of the young lad not the voice of Hagar why because when God looked at Ishmael he saw Abraham and received and saw the covenant God more often times to say he blessed Solomon for the sake of his father David are we together when the kingdom was about to be advanced after Christ came he got 12 men entered a personal covenant with them listen let me tell you there is a difference between those apostles and us we are equal in Christ but they were men who entered a certain kind of covenant with God that represented the advancement of God's kingdom if Satan killed all those 12 apostles the kingdom could not be advanced because it was through them that it will be spread that's why God protected them angels had to come and open prisons to force them to go out are we together one man called John the beloved had a personal understanding it was his personal covenant with God that granted him access to show us the revelation the apocalypses the unfolding of prophecy there are still men like that on the earth. There are not many, but there are. In fact, the system of God's electing these men is always in twelves. There's no time to teach you on that. That God's apostolic governing system is always in twelves. So in, in regions, you will always find this number, twelve. The apostolic spiritual governing council of God. They may not even know themselves. But they represent God's order of activities. Are we together? But you see, when the devil wants to deceive you, he will bring pride and make you look like I can access the throne of God by myself. I, am, I don't need to hear anything. Even when God is giving a word of caution, most times we don't listen and we say, no, 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 no. I'm nobody should do this and that and that. And then, you know, um, I don't even want to go into that, that teaching because it will take our whole time. As you know, I love the body of Christ. I am the last person who will fight the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ and I love the different dimensions of spiritual operation. But then I am always quick to attack imbalances especially when they get to a level where they can corrupt the authenticity of the work of believers the moment an imbalance gets so bad that it can bring you out of spiritual alignment it calls for concern are we together and one of it is of course as we know the concept of grace are we together now now when you understand the concept of grace and you isolate it with respect to other things that God is doing it becomes an error grace as a doctrine on its own is an error it only makes sense when you add it together and you piece it together with every other thing God is doing when you study the book of Ephesians the book of Ephesians theologically speaking contains the highest church truth are we together where Apostle Paul was teaching the church he was giving them certain doctrines the entire scope of a christian experience six chapters which were a communication of the entire activities of the believer so it starts theologically speaking with what we call sitting right you've heard you've read that and many of you have heard it in different messages it was that revelation came by a man called watchman knee watchman knee was the 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 apostle that God used to communicate the realities of redemption in a very balanced and authentic way to the body of Christ. And so that position of sitting, the Bible starts in the book of Ephesians, teaching us how, in fact, when it starts in chapter 1, 
it never talks about us it talks about christ and all that he has done when you start reading chapter 2 it now brings us into the scene right we are now raised up with christ so the revelation of god's grace is seen in chapter 1 and 2 and it is true that the foundation of a believer's life is predicated upon the grace of god there are certain things that we can never have ourselves like righteousness it is impossible for anybody to have righteousness by himself the bible says the best of our righteousness is as filthy rags and do not confuse righteousness and uprightness they are not the same righteousness and uprightness are not the same righteousness is a gift from god uprightness is our response the advantage our our work of faith i'm just giving us are, are you getting blessed i just want to establish a few things before we continue it's very very important so the bible starts teaching us on the grace of god and all the possibilities that come with that grace all that christ had done for us in his death his burial his resurrection and his ascension into heaven in fact it was on the strength of that that paul began to teach in chapter in verse 17 he said for this cause i have a passion for you understanding this this is the foundation of your victory in christ and for this cause i paul bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you right the spirit of revelation you know and understanding that your eyes being enlightened or flooded with light that you may know certain things one is the hope of your calling and then you know the power that raised christ that was exerted when christ was raised from the dead you know and, and all of that and paul begins to speak he knew that the church needs to know that but paul did not just walk there he didn't stop there he began to talk about what is called theologically our walk of faith right character now you taking advantage of the grace of god i told you this there are two dimensions to the grace of god there is a grace of god as unmerited access and there is a grace of god as power to live like christ they are all called grace don't just confuse them grace does not just mean what god has done and we receive by faith there is a dimension of grace that represents everything christ has done that we could not do and he gave it to us we receive it by faith but there is a dimension of grace that empowers us to do we will do but it's not by our strength are we together and then he wraps up the book of ephesians with what is called the the you know uh, standing and then our, our, our walk and then you know sitting and standing then it talks of spiritual warfare our ability to contend against powers and principalities and listen every doctrine that must build a believer please hear me every doctrine that must build a believer must sustain all these components whenever there is a deviation from this pattern it will lead to error if you try to teach people how to do warfare how to do character and you forget the grace of god you will lead them into error and legalism are we together when you try to bring isolate the doctrine of holiness without giving men the foundation of faith you will lead to self-righteousness which does not hold any weight in the spirit and so it must be in that order the first thing believers must understand about god is not warfare is the grace of god and that's encapsulated in what we call the gospel of salvation a revelation of the substitutionary work of uh, uh, jesus christ which is a reflection of the love of the father so when we see that grace then our walking right now by faith is our own participation that's called the gospel of the kingdom our reward in gratitude and honor for that sacrifice for us and then our standing it says haven't done all to stand stand Now, let me tell you something. The part of this truth you ignore is the path the devil will use to destroy your life. You can't choose sitting as it were. Grace. You can't choose kingdom just like that and isolate it. You can't choose deliverance just like that. There's a series on it and you can get it after the service. It's called the full gospel. Where all these doctrines were examined one by one. Their imperfections, their imbalances, to the end that the bride of Christ will become perfect. 
he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city equal in length equal in breadth equal in height and part of the possibilities in the kingdom is the foundation of the apostles and the prophets christ himself being the chief cornerstone god stations these men so that they can communicate the speakings of the spirit and it is that same order of god's system that was mimicked by the antichrist system when you read the book of revelations from uh, uh, chapter 13 and the rest the bible tells us that satan empowered the beast the beast will now empower the false prophets the same order the same way god empowers his apostles and prophets to communicate certain things satan empowers the beast who empowers the false prophets and then they continue carrying out their agenda so there is a system spiritual growth is not haphazard you don't choose how you want it's not even just how your pastor said so there is an irrefutable pattern that has not changed it did not change just because um, God Jesus Christ came and died for us no it's an eternal pattern it was carved out of who God is not what he is doing are we together There are people who believe in miracles but they do not believe in the prophetic and the apostolic that lapse is satan's authorization in their life there are people who do not believe in the gift of the spirit but they are well-meaning people that lapse is satan's you know advantage in their life there are people for instance who believe in grace but they may not believe in holiness and righteousness and all of that and satan takes advantage of it there are people who believe in deliverance but may not believe in the grace of God. And Satan takes advantage and they are forever fighting every and anything. The key is not exemption. The key is balance. Everybody say balance. Say it again, balance. The key is balance. Because all of these things are components of the same system. Hallelujah. And so I want you to believe the prophetic is real. It is still functional. It did not die with the New Testament. The prophetic is real. Now I know that here and there people may have exaggerated certain dimensions of it. But it's not enough reason for us to throw the baby and the bad water. Lives can be rescued when we understand what God is saying. And the Bible says, he that hears, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith." to the churches so if he's talking to one person he's talking to the ecclesia the church hallelujah pray in one minute and say lord i hear what you are saying i'm not rebellious i hear what you are saying you are speaking to the church i am part of the church and i hear what you are saying i hear what you are saying i'm not a rebel i hear what you are saying i hear what you are saying go ahead and pray strategies right now that God revealed to me and then we we'll take some time and really pray I want us to seriously pray tonight and God will grant us that grace are we together if you fight economic empowerment get set to struggle spiritually promise made a statement when he came to receive the offering and he said having abundance of supplies will increase your prayer life and minimize your prayer points how true you see let me tell you something this system that we live in cosmos is a system that was designed intelligently 
Are we together? God made the heavens and the earth, but the system, the social strata, and its civilization was nicely modeled and built by Lucifer, the custodian of the Antichrist system. And he built it such that our civilization will only thrive on economic empowerment. Please listen. Are we together now? And part of the imbalance that we're talking about is what has produced believers who are prayerful, loving, but we have not paid attention to our finances. And in this season, our flaw is becoming obvious. Are we together? Many anointed churches are seen right now that they cannot buy generator for their prayer meetings. Many churches that will have to depend on rent or something. The man, the landlord may be an unbeliever and he may get up under the influence of a strange spirit and say no more use of this venue. It is locked and what happens? The sheep is scattered. It's a strategy by the pit of hell because the Bible says the borrower is and will always be slave to the lender. So our concept of empowerment must be seen not just as a desire to be rich and to be money mongers. Please get this. If that is your thinking, you are already in error. The concept of empowerment is to rise to a level where we overcome the influence of mammon. That spirit that is, is compelling the nations to worship her. There is a spirit. It's called mammon. If you have not seen that spirit, just look around our government. And you will know that that spirit is being worshipped. The obsession for the worship of images and the worship of Lucifer did not start in our generation. Right? Remember when a king built 90 solid feet, go and said that the sound of music, everybody will bow down and worship. And your survival in that territory depended on your willingness to bow. Some gentlemen said, oh king, no. They found another system of exemption and they changed the tide. Businesses are bowing already. Churches are bowing already. Systems are coming to their knees. I've heard men of God who didn't used to talk about certain things. And I've been surprised hearing the way they are beginning to be so obsessed about financial principles that are not consistent with the ways of the Lord. And the reason is because for every leader, what faith is to the realm of the spirit, that's what finance is to this realm. You must pay the school fees of your child. Are we together? And that reality is beginning to punish a lot of people to the detriment of their spiritual life. But everybody said there is a way out. Shout it, say there is a way out. The way out of financial hardship in this season goes beyond investments, goes beyond business. Let me tell you what the Holy Ghost told me. You see, if you do investments, you need money to make money. Is that true? You need money to make money. If you do business, you are selling products, you are selling services and that's all right. But the problem is that the products you are selling have a fixed price and cannot be manipulated ordinarily. Are we together? Meaning there is a limit to what can come into your hand. There is a limit to patronage and all of that. But the key, I've said it again and again, is when you become the product yourself. Not just that you offer services, you become the service. When you become valuable, not just have things that are valuable, but you yourself as a person, you rise to a point where you become an epitome of value. You have entered your financial Sabbath, I guarantee you. The most expensive commodity, for instance, on earth is the anointing. And when you have the anointing, we used to jokingly say it sometimes with Jimmy, how that we watch people who we know do not know one, maybe one twentieth of the business principles we should know but because they possess the most expensive commodity on earth which is the anointing and its ability to provide supernatural solutions they exempt themselves from the tide and the grip of mammon 
So God's call for us in this season as believers to exempt us from the economic turmoil that is whipping the nations and that will inevitably come and lash a lot of people in Nigeria is not only to surround ourselves with valuable things. Valuable things are important, but be the value yourself. And we have that advantage because the Holy Ghost is here to help us. That's why I said your greatest business strategy in this season is to labor in the spirit and carry something authentic and supernatural. You will enter the Sabbath of your life. Do you believe what I'm saying? Please believe it. I can sell palm oil. Is it not when you need palm oil that you buy it? Are we together? I have palm oil in industrial scale. But until there is a demand. But you see, let me tell you something. The, rev the world revolves around certain things that will never um, run out of demand. One of it is the anointing one of it is the realities that come from the life of a man in partnership with the holy spirit such that even in your business you are offering much more than the product first and foremost you have risen to a point where you have become so valuable then any other valuable thing around you only becomes a support not the basis for your confidence do you understand what i'm saying As harsh as the economic climate is, there are people moving as if it doesn't exist in Nigeria. Please, don't ever deceive yourself that everybody is crying. Let me tell you why we all look like we are crying. Because people have found out that if you don't cry with others, the, the anger and the pain, they will fight you back. So they just cry and say, cry. Honestly, God is, is faithful. But the truth is not everybody is crying. There are people who are far from crying. They have found the key. Every one naira that seems to disappear did not go out of earth. It's somewhere. It's in the hands of those who have paid the price to become valuable. I made up my mind that as God grants grace, I will pay the price to be so valuable. Because by God's grace, my life and this ministry should not come to a point where we are stranded and the purposes of the kingdom becomes jeopardized simply because of a, a God called Mammon. Look at me. Do you know that there are many of our families we have tried to bring them maybe for the meetings and they may not want to listen. But how many of you know that if we buy something tomorrow and we say everybody should come and line up? Vim, Omo, sewing machine, bikes. You will see people who swore that they will never come here you see them standing even if they will not use it they will get it and go and sell it and quickly use the money that's the reality of economic hardship and from the vision the lord showed me listen people will do things that you will not imagine do you know in the bible women ate their children the bible says, can a mother forget her child this one a mother remembered as he ate the child that's what finances can do you talk about prostitution is child's play when poverty hits people they will make calls that they did not made for years you see if you do not empower your people don't blame them for perversion and i found out that you do not judge spiritual seriousness just from the face you can see someone praying but knows that there are seven people whose daily bread are dependent upon them they will go and sleep with any allergy anywhere and bring the money they will even bring it and so project 10,000. Are we together? Say in the name of Jesus. I exempt myself from this economic hardship. Say it in the name of Jesus. I exempt myself from this economic hardship. The Bible says when men say there is a casting down for you. It says you will say there is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. But if you don't believe this, sooner or later, you will have to face the bitter reality of this prophetic word. Because it will happen. 
I want to be honest with you. I'm not one person who just prophesies everything I see, but I, I, I salute the government of this nation. I know that they are doing their best with what they know and whatever covenant they are part of, but I, I want to tell you one truth here. I don't see transformation happening very soon. Let me tell you the truth. All that, I've, and, and I, I, I don't mean to insult anybody, but a lot of people have given so many prophecies, you are going to see boom, not 2016. It will happen for those who have the strategies. But as far as the world is speaking, you have not seen tears. Wait till July finishes. I've, I'm telling you what I've seen. You will see people sit down and cry like children. I'm not talking of illiterates. You will sit down and gather your degree and shed tears on it. But for those who are hearing this thing and will pay the price to become valuable, I tell you, you will rise as if the devil does not exist. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with level of education. Hear me. It has nothing to do with gender. It has everything to do with having perceptions and receiving God's strategy for now. Don't sit down and confuse yourself saying this and that. I'm an astute businessman. Just keep quiet and let the Lord speak to you. I'm not daft. I understand business. If you hear me speak to you like this, it is what the Lord is saying per season. Let me tell you, what will give you bread is what God is saying, not what you know. What God is saying, the direction of God is the direction of favor. The direction of God is the direction of life. Is God speaking to us? You must challenge yourself to be valuable in this season. The devil is a liar. Kai, the devil is a liar. There is a spirit in Asia called Quatsi Quata. That's what the Bible calls Mammon. It's a spirit. Many of you have seen it. It's the image of a flying serpent, a flying dragon. That is the exact picture of Mammon. It's a spirit that will compel the nations to bow to its leadership. I assure you, many people will bow. The concept of 666 is not just something you receive on your hand and receive on your forehead. It's already happening. When a system compels you, receiving the mark is not just having a physical inscription. It's coming under the sovereign rule of that system so that you have no options. You have received the mark. Are we together? But God is going to grant us grace. We will come out in another dimension. No, 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 no. Listen, let me tell you. I don't know about you. But Koinonia will not bow to this system. There is a superior covenant. We have the rod of a higher priesthood. No devil, no spirit, no system. Will make us change our message. To tone down the apostolic work God has given. So that we can attract certain kinds of wealthy individuals. That's what is happening to pastors right now. There are certain messages you cannot preach. If it is not rich man friendly. Get set to sweep your church by yourself. So you have to tone down certain things. There are certain mainstream TV programs right now. Where you are not permitted to teach certain topics. It used to be that you can't mention the name of Jesus. But now they've taken it to another level. Certain topics should not be taught on mainstream. If you teach about pressure, how to manage it, how love, how people can, can come together, a gospel of universalism, marry anything, anyhow, anywhere, doesn't matter. You are, you are welcome. The mainstream invites you. But the moment you have an outspoken voice, the system will strangle you. And economic empowerment... Lack of it is Satan's weapon of mass destruction. It's worse than backsliding. Are we together? Pray in one minute and say, I must be exempted in this season. Please pray. 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 are you praying oh every time 
the devil try to bring his arsenal and fight the church God is always one strategy ahead one strategy ahead one strategy ahead one strategy ahead Keep praying. Raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Nanoka. Sunanka Ubangi Jika Isaya Nagir Mama Sunanka Ubangi Jika Nagir Mama Sunanka Ubangi Jika Isaya Nagir Mama Sunanka Ubangi Jika I tell you we will not bow Hey! your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in all of you Lord we will raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in all of you the grace to be valuable that when men say there is a casting down the bible says your gates shall be continually open it will not be short day or night right that you will receive the forces of the gentiles that's what the bible says you can be valuable and exempt yourself from the economic whiplash hear me I'm not talking of business. I'm not talking of investments. I'm talking of being so valuable. Carrying something that cannot be found in the earth realm. Carrying something that is not of an earthly origin. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Sit down. I told you there will be lots of impartations we'll pray. My passion is that something will come upon your life. Listen, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. When this glory of God comes on a man, it will change you. You will veto laws and walk as if Satan does not exist. Never trivialize the anointing. It's a big deal. I'm not talking of being anointed where you are competing with people and fighting. No. God raises you by his grace and puts you in a pedestal. No mammon. No devil. No policy affects you. It's a realm. It's a dimension. We frown at the supernatural. Because we think we're in an intellectual realm. Many times when pastors speak, a lot of business people just say, these guys are daft, they don't know what they're saying. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The voice of God. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. That is why I will not want. The Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd guides. He knows where the green grasses are. He says, he leads me. He leads me. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Isaiah 48 verse 17. Right? I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to profit. 
Nada o caca sunanka, o bangi de caisaia bo. Na girma na sunanka, o bangi de. Nada o caca sunanka, o bangi de caisaia bo. Na girma na sunanka, o bangi de. Some of you, this is what you will need. You will step into a place and men will look for you. Who said where you are staying is too far? You have not carried something. When you carry something, listen, let me tell you when you know you are anointed. When no price is too much to meet you, you are really anointed. When no price is too much to meet you, have you watched people during foil scarcity? They have their money but they still queue and they are not angry. That's how valuable foil is. When you get to a point where people don't mind trekking from anywhere to say, I have learned that the wisdom of God is upon your mouth and we have come as a nation. That's where Joshua Selman is going to. Listen, Koinonia is not an exclusive reserve of preachers. Power was never for preachers. Power is for them who will survive in this season because there are gates that you must stand against and it takes the anointing it takes unction not stories not preaching unction listen churches are closing because there's no results we argue and say it doesn't matter but they are closing the devil is closing them the devil is closing them people are coming in with devilish policies against the church you know why they have not seen our relevance by the time a city cannot do without the church no devil will close it no devil will close it listen so the key is not just making noise the key is rising to that point please hear me when you become valuable listen listen if I give you 500,000 to go and invest, you can make money. If I give you a product to sell, if this is 100 Naira, everybody you sell to, you will sell at 100 Naira. So you move at their pace. But when you become valuable, your reward is left to the perception of your benefactors. One person can see you and give you 100,000 because that's what he perceives. The next person can give you 10 million because that's what he perceives is the key to accelerating ourselves to enter that wealthy place let me tell you some levels of businesses are too slow to supply the funds required for kingdom advancement it takes being valuable the queen of sheba there was no word on solomon she carried her treasure to solomon there are shebas there are cyruses that must arise with their treasure and I'm praying prophetically that someone tonight an unction an unction an unction from the throne an unction from the throne will come upon someone that will change your life where your voice becomes like the voice of God Listen, let me tell you this there will be no longer begging in the church all that depending on the world system no the key is not to sit down waiting for someone to employ you as good as that is the key has been given to us the Holy Ghost handing you the keys that can open any door and you will watch mammon mammon will watch you and not be able to do anything listen I saw this in the vision that the Lord showed me many people will be constrained 
their life it will be as if they should die because the doors are closed let me quickly talk about the two points we're rounding up there is a key that will conquer exhaustion in this season please write it down there are many weary people and it's natural to be weary but let me tell you the key please hear me i want you to write it it's a very simple key spend time praying in the spirit spend time i didn't say pray in the spirit at will carelessly when you want spend time praying in the spirit i want you to fan your prayer life in a dimension that will be too hot for any devil bishop oyedeko said no matter how mad a man is no matter how mad a man is he will not enter fire in the name of madness are we together you want to survive the tides brothers and sisters let me tell you your prayer altar must be like the seven times hotter fire that they threw the hebrew boys the bible says those who threw them themselves were burnt to death are we together you lie down on your bed you turn a little shakata bakata batata. where your prayer creates an effect you enter your house as you are shouting in tongues something is happening you are shaking gates prayer read your bible has always been the key to true apostolic and prophetic revival when you pray let me tell you no matter how dead your spiritual life is when you invest in prayer you will burn that devil to nonsense he must give you more. i don't mean prayer that you are just asking and begging and crying that's why i said pray in the spirit because for many of us our prayer in understanding is petition and languishing and pain and anger but you lock yourself and you pray i'm not just saying when you are in your prayer room you are moving on the road you are praying beneath your voice somebody drops a charm at you it backfires on him by night he has become mad are we together someone is carrying a talisman and you are sitting down and you are going to sabo he will drop at main gates because the fire is too hot he makes listen he makes his ministers win spirits right his angel spirit and his ministers flames i've said it again I pity the herbalist that will make concoction and call my name. It's, it's not only that it will not work. If it didn't work, he has still insulted me. He will fry to death physically. Physically. I'm not, I'm not motivating you. You think they've not tried it? How can you be leading a ministry like this and not tried it? Only God knows till we get to heaven before we know how many poisons we have eaten. Let me tell you something when your prayer life is alive and healthy anytime you are walking just imagine in your head fire literal fire are we together john wesley said set yourself on fire and the whole world will come to watch you burn set yourself on fire stop discussing things with people who cannot help you Go and lock yourself. Your body says, I'm tired. You say, you are joking. As you begin to pray, you will first feel weak for a few minutes. Keep praying. It's normal. Just keep praying. When you touch that escape velocity, you will touch a realm where strength you cannot explain will land upon you. You plan to pray for one hour. You will stretch five hours. Believe me, I know what I'm saying nobody starts praying just out of comfort it's like you are starting shake it you are tired you are moving you are tired keep praying don't say ah this and that the devil will tell ah, there's something in the fridge Have you, don't just keep praying oh apostle i'm praying and thinking about women keep praying that's what is supposed to solve there is a level 
to which the fire will be too hot your flesh must burn and allow your spirit accept listen when the holy ghost is called fire it's not just what we do in church fire fire no he's real fire fire is a mystery those who will pray in this season will record unbelievable breakthroughs believe me travail you pray in the spirit thank god we have a very robust prayer department you come there and stretch it out with destiny after two hours your antenna is to the heavens any demon is flying above you they hang there they hang there because you are passing you are not even praying the fire will roast every devil around anywhere that's what we are talking about listen many of us are too cold that's why the devil will come and sit on your destiny and it will look like nothing is happening there are cold churches a spirit will arise from somewhere and just come and sit upon the man of God and his wife and his family but for koinonia no way shout no way fire when there is fire burning somebody will come with migraine as he's crossing that 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 junction to enter koinonia the migraine will just leave that's fire speaking that's fire speaking it works but if you walk it it's not a gift it's a labor in the spirit this is the labor dimension of spiritual growth men will pay you let me tell you your 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 job is to just become genuinely anointed by the power of god and you watch what god will do in your life it's what a jimmy calls transformational wealth that dimension of wealth that is tied to people rewarding you because the last time they shook your hand every gate opened every every gate open just by shaking you do you think they want to be your friend absolutely absolutely praying in the spirit becoming valuable praying in the spirit becoming valuable the third key in this season is the power of corporate fellowship the power of corporate fellowship if the devil can successfully isolate you in this season just know that you are quarter to die are we together there is a difference between isolation and solitude once the devil wants to destroy you let me tell you what he will do look up please he will use offense huh? and push away everybody every intercessor in your life you will fight with him everybody who has grace and love for you you will fight with him he will push every relevant person push you to the wall alone and then that's where you sit down there and become a victim of his assaults a corporate life is a powerful key in the realm of the spirit the power of a corporate life that you come together and where i am almost giving up as you land with your fire based on unity of faith and the spirit of brotherhood before my fire jacks up your fire is roasting every devil that i came with are we together corporate fellowship how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity it is like the oil that flows from the head of aaron that priest down to his bed down to his skirt he said for there the lord has commanded the blessing corporate life I'm a man of God of myself. You will pay for it in this season. You need corporate grace. Corporate grace. Corporate grace. Because no matter what you have seen, you will need that. Sometimes that corporate grace will help you confirm if the path you are walking is of God. The devil can isolate you and you just keep moving and you are flattering yourself until you land in fire. Are we together? But koinonia we are going to pray i don't know about you but for as long as you are genuinely connected to this ministry you must be exempted from this nonsense that is ravaging nations it's like an angel of death is is entering families bam sickness incurable diseases have you heard recently how people are dying just from headache they say somebody has headache before they rush him to the hospital he's dead oh, come on a woman is pregnant 
just when labor starts she becomes deaf and dumb then she dies we are going to drive that devil out of zaria are you ready to pray no we are going to pray there is a church in zaria and we will pray we will pray and drive it far and say we surround this city with a mystery that makes any enchantment not to be able to drive we represent god's seat of of governance in this city and we must pray there's no room for carelessness we must pray lift your voice and pray in tongues for a while make sure you participate everybody don't be tired we are praying young and old everyone pray Are you praying? Hallelujah. Anointing for Sing it as a prayer from the depth of your heart. family members are depending on us not our preaching the activity of the power of God upon our lives there are people standing here let me tell you listen this thing that I saw there are families I know I saw it happening to in that vision and I like you to pray you are not desiring the anointing out of covetousness you need it there are, there are thrones and dominions that must be subdued and apostle joshua selma may not be there the goal is not to have one superstar the goal is that you carry fire and go to your regions and begin to speak the purposes of god and while you are doing that god will compel men to lift you it has nothing to do with ministry please i like you to pray and say father let a strange unction fall upon my life Oh, let the earthly become heavenly. Let the earthly become heavenly. Let the earthly become heavenly. In this season, they that will survive must be men of power authentic unction unction beyond imagination unction beyond argument unction beyond argument unction beyond argument ta 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 ba ta ka pa ra ka ta Lord send that fire upon my life send that fire 
upon my gifts send that fire upon my degree send that fire upon my PhD send that fire upon my business send that fire upon my company send that fire upon my church send that fire upon my family Oh yes, send that fire upon my life. Send that unction upon my life. The earnest expectation of creation awaits my manifestation. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time. 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 Hallelujah. Listen, listen. One encounter with the anointing can give you an open door that your lifetime will not exhaust it if you believe what I'm telling you. One encounter, one, one encounter can open a financial door for you that will wipe your tears. One encounter can make you a friend to somebody who will pay your being a friend with him forever one encounter listen listen hallelujah i'd like you to pray a prayer you've heard us pray it here but i want you to pray it with all your heart everyone appointed to reward my grace i compel them to appear go ahead and pray it's not enough to have an anointing there are men who can reward your grace there are institutions send them oh god to koinonia send them to your people men and women who need what you carry your entrepreneurial anointing your leadership anointing your spirit of motherhood send them to my life oh god men and women who have what it takes hallelujah hallelujah listen listen look up look up i know very anointed men and women they love God passionately but they have never met the people assigned to bless them you don't preach for money you don't carry the anointing just for money but you see God designed it in such a way that as you dispense the realities of the kingdom there is a feedback system that should empower you so you continue being effective are we together listen the day you stand in the presence you see many of us are around people who love our gifts but do not have the grace to reward it are we together you can labor and pray and fast and go and preach somewhere and someone will pat your back and say wow you are an awesome man of god i've never seen a man of god in this state like you that's not enough reward but there is a way you can have an encounter and someone will come and bring a generator buy you a car and say what does it take to stop you from thinking about the finances if you are such a voice i should sponsor you rising to any level there are men like that there are some of us the value you have now let me tell you sincerely the value you have now you is enough for you to be blessed forever 
but you have not encountered those who have what it takes listen there are pastors hear me who until you preach somewhere where your helpers are that's what will expand your church all of a sudden it will be like they are hearing you for the first time yes i know there are millions of men of god in nigeria but there are others assigned to honor you 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 can be singing singing songs laboring and traveling from pillar to post but if you can discern god can send you to somebody who has the means but needs your music when it was time for the lifting of david a spirit was upon saul and saul needed a musician to drive it all of a sudden they went and fished out david how many times did david play for saul when he played just once saul loved him there are circles that i have entered and i ministered once and god connected me to people who will bless me forever and that day it wasn't even as if i was saying anything it was just that god connected me to people who will be blessed tomorrow when asaba a mighty meeting happening in the stadium and we're going to minister they started preparing for this meeting tomorrow one year one year they came to book one year in advance they have been praying logistics publicity all over the city and we're going to go and storm the gates of hell there is some you are not assigned everywhere look you need to pray that those assigned to honor what you carry otherwise you'll be frustrated trying to be everything to anybody lift your voice one more time and say direct them oh god direct them direct them to me oh in this season direct my blessers direct those you have sent to be blessed by my ministry direct those who have been sent to be blessed by my business shabakata posh on the prosasi keruta sabarikata direct them you are a prophet but not to everyone that god will bring the ears of those who have been anointed to hear your voice you are an apostle not to everyone that God will direct the people the institutions hallelujah we're going to be praying that in this season please hear me that in this season god will grant you grace to have passion for the house of god that you will not allow the devil corner you somewhere and destroy you and destroy your family he said as for me and my house i don't know about you but as for me i have made up but the bible says they that be planted no flimsy excuses Oh, we are tired today. They that be planted in the house of God, they will flourish in the courts of our God. I'd like you to pray passionately and say, Lord, grace and passion for your house. Grace and passion. Grace and passion for your house. Supernatural grace. Supernatural passion for your house for your house for your house hallelujah hallelujah we are rounding up one category of people who will be exempted from any nonsense in this season are passionate and addicted soul winners listen listen there was a time they needed money to pay for tax it was a period that they needed money desperately they had come to collect tax and jesus said go and catch fish and fish in the bible is symbolic of souls when they caught those souls in that mission work they found money 
as they were preaching God provided a way as they were preaching fishers of men they went to fish and they said open the mouth of that fish as that fish testifies the greatness of God and confesses with his mouth the lordship of Christ you engage a law automatically that brings you wealth hear me please believe what I'm saying there are many people here who love God we are prayer warriors but we are not so winners you stand up alone and drag yourself to koinonia you wave your roommates you wave your family members you come here and get blessed while you are getting blessed the devil is using them to destroy your blessing you go back home a soul winner is an intercessor lord you must change my family members there are people who can come on friday and say look i'm going around this place have you heard about koinonia you've never really come you see this this our shame big boy big girl there are no big boys and big girls in the kingdom it takes passion when you are doggedly involved in soul winning you schedule seasons of exemption i can tell you this i can tell you this are we together you are in your office you are there and you leave every other person someone tells you uh -uh, um the devil is trying to manipulate my life. Oga Jordan did something today that blessed me so, so much. Some people came to his shop to buy books. And the way they began to talk, at once he knew it was a demonic situation. God has given you spiritual intelligence. There is a way you hear people talk. What they are saying in the realm of the spirit is, I need help. You just listen to them and say bye-bye. The moment they began to talk, you know, Oga Jordan said this and that. They wanted to see me and he said, oh, it may not be easy to see me. But he bought communion and took a bike and came and said I should pray on the communion. And returned it back and gave the people. And I was looking at him. I said, why won't he explode? Let me tell you, if God, if your life becomes an epitome of support for God's interest, forget about begging. This is the God I serve. You may not know all you need to know. But that your life can find space to bring God. This is how this ministry started. Every night, somebody was dragging somebody. Come and get filled with the Holy Ghost. Come and get born again. You may not have the power to change them. But you have what it takes to invite them. Some of you, 50 naira is what you need to draw a soul. Ah, Koinonia has a crowd. It's not about competition of crowd. It's about destinies that must change. Are we together? What's wrong with calling your loved ones and say there is there is a platform now to hear this online? Since you think you are too sick to come, connect to the miracle service. You see, let me tell you something. This is what we do that produces some of the results. Anybody that is too big to win souls is too big to experience the favor of God. If you are too big to win souls, too big to win souls. Ah, I preached and they insulted me. So what? Didn't Jesus say it? Blessed are you when men persecute and revile you. Rejoice! For so they did the prophets and the rest. You have social media platforms that you can use as platforms to draw people to the house of God where they can be blessed. You see, until you see yourself as part of what God is doing, you are not entitled to his blessings. When you see yourself as somebody who just comes for koinonia, leave the workers and the ministers. When you exempt yourself, you also exempt yourself from that covenant of blessing. He said, if you are the children of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. I'd like you to pray before I speak over our lives. Lord, grace... To be intentional about saving people from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Grace to be a conduit for someone to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Grace to be a channel for someone to receive the teachings that will change their life.
Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I want to pray for you. And I want you to believe it. Praise the Lord. This prayer is, is not just, I know that I pray in partitions every time. Don't you think you are getting the same thing? You see, one thing with grace is when it comes. Yes, I know that some of us, it's not yet time for manifestation. But you can begin to do something with it. Are we together? One day, instead of dragging somebody to go for prayer department prayer, before the prayer department, teach the person on the baptism in the Holy Ghost and try to lay hands on the person by yourself before you go. Everybody must have room to start something. If someone is sick, don't just say, here is apostle's number. Here is head of department prayer. Here is sister head of department. Here is a Jimmy or Pastor Femi or Pastor Alpha or every, any, any other person. No, you can tell him, look, I agree with you. I am part of a family that has a healing anointing and I want to agree with you. If you pray with the person and nothing happens, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Everybody you see had an occasion to begin to exercise themselves. Anointings are useless if you are not ready to use them. God does not waste. He said, gather the fragments that there be no waste. Are we together? I want to pray for you. There are three things I'm going to pray for you. The anointing for uncommon wisdom. That's the first thing I'll pray for you. Let me tell you, I know many foolish people. It's not by age. I have seen this ancient wisdom upon my life. As young as I look, I have seen it. I know it is real. I saw it in people. I coveted it with my heart. And the day it landed upon me, I knew. The anointing for wisdom. Strategies. Two, the anointing for favor. You need favor in this season. Favor is not when you do things by yourself. Favor is when God raises men to do things for you. It's not about having money. It's about the appearance of men in your life to wipe your tears. It's called favor. Number three. The supernatural power of the Holy Ghost to provide solutions to people. There are sick people. There are oppressed people. Waiting for Joshua Selman to heal everybody's idolatry. That's not God's design. God's design is that you become an extension of what we represent. That when we cannot be there, you can arise. They tell you a woman is failing to give birth. You lay hands on her stomach and ask her to give birth there and then. No CS. It has nothing to do with being a pastor or being a prophet. You don't need to carry any ministry. You just need to carry the spirit of grace. Lift your hands. The spirit of wisdom. Spirit of wisdom. There is a level of wisdom that is beyond age. It's not found in the realm of men. It comes from heaven. Job was asked a question. When cometh this wisdom? Where is it? Where is it? They ask the place of the dead and they say it's not with us. We don't know where it is. He said only God knows the place thereof. Hmm? Whose price is higher than rubies. He said doth not wisdom cry. Her price is far above rubies. Right? He said by me kings reign and princes decree justice. With me are riches, wealth and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The grace for supernatural wisdom. Uncommon wisdom. Let it come upon your life in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. From today, you begin to function at a frequency of wisdom. That no man will begin to gain say or resist. Number two, the Bible says all who saw Esther loved her. Favor. There is such a thing as favor. There is such a thing as divine, supernatural, not man-made, arranged favor. Favor from strangers. When those who know you favor you, it makes sense. When a stranger is moved by the Holy Ghost to serve the purposes of God in your life, your business and your ministry. Then you know that that's favor. Receive that grace for favor. 
receive that grace for favor receive that grace for favor listen some of you before the end of this night strange testimonies strange testimonies you are thinking of buying a bible someone brings it you are thinking of buying something someone brings it now that's favor you are looking for a place to pray someone says i have my room anytime you need to pray i give you that's favor you are trusting god to travel for a meeting somewhere you are stranded in car someone says i will sponsor you pay for your flight and bring you back receive that order of testimonies in the name of jesus christ Oh, it will come upon you. Believe me. Believe me. You will carry it bodily and go out with it. Hallelujah. The last prayer. Lift your hands. This one will come upon you big. Listen. We need miracles, signs, and wonders. The ministry of miracles has not ended signs and wonders the sick healed the oppressed delivered you command breakthroughs in the lives and destinies of men don't just waste words as you speak to people you influence the realm of the spirit to provide solutions for people lift your hands father i pray over your people that ordinary life that ordinary preaching that doing things ordinary from today step into the supernatural step into the supernatural step into the supernatural the unction for signs wonders and miracles let it come upon your life right now the ability to see the ability to speak the prophetic word of God ah, yeah, 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 yeah. it will come on some of you I release it upon you in the name of Jesus listen some of you from today as you stand close to people just contact with them it will be like a register open in the realm of the spirit receive that grace in the name of Jesus I pray for you the way God can have respect for the prayer of a man and solve another person's problem because of who prayed in the Bible God had respect for the prayers of men Elisha prayed right what well, it was Elijah that prayed that God will open the eyes of his servant he didn't ask the servant whether he had faith he had a covenant of answered prayer and because of it a man's eyes was open i pray for you in the name of jesus christ one more time may your eyes be open may your eyes be open hallelujah before anything will happen to you and to your loved ones may it never escape your vista you will see it hallelujah and i want to pray for people who the devil has manipulated their visions to a point that they no longer trust what they see you started seeing well but the devil wanting to confuse you shakatabata i tell you i see an anointing coming on people the devil wanted to confuse you and started aberrating your vision and what you started seeing stopped coming to pass in the name of jesus christ i pray for you right now receive clarity 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 by the power of the holy ghost we correct that anomaly in the name of jesus i don't know the spirit that is lingering around the body of christ giving men bad visions taking advantage of their prophetic dimensions and confusing them so that their words will not be heard 
and so that their visions will not be seen some of you now you have closed yourself to visions because the things you saw look corrupted i pray for you again may that spirit that manipulates your visions be casted out of your life right now time time everything kept changing except one word He connected everything to times and he connected everything to seasons. First Chronicles chapter 12, please, and verse 32. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. And of the children of Issachar, the Bible says, which were men. Help us under the anointing, please. They were men that had understanding of the times. He says, and they knew what Israel ought to do. As a result, the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. They were people who had an understanding of the times and they knew what Israel had to do. Ready for the last verse? Psalm 90 and verse 12. A verse for wise people. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom can we read it together one to read that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom please may i request that protocol all the vacant seats aside from these ones please let them be filled there's no reason why we should have empty seats when there are people standing please please hallelujah we rise in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know i've taught you that a mystery is a modus operandi a a body of knowledge that is privy to a group of people in this case privy to believers men and women who are in christ and so when the bible talks about the mysteries of the kingdom it is a revelation of the modus operandi of the kingdom the way the kingdom operates so that by accessing these mysteries we can reign we can excel in life we can live when the lord opened me up to this truth it so impacted my life i i wish that i i could gather the whole world and preach this message to everyone alive because as you will be learning there are severe consequences for not knowing these truths that i'm about to share it does not matter whether you are a pastor a politician a businessman it doesn't matter what walk of life young old this is a truth that applies to all hallelujah praise the name of the lord this is the secret for transgenerational relevance you understand what i'm teaching you tonight after 30 years you will still be standing standing strong and doing so much for the kingdom hallelujah praise the name of the lord the bible tells us in genesis chapter 41 please pay attention that there was a king in egypt called the pharaoh of egypt is that true and then the bible says once upon a time that this pharaoh of egypt went to bed and this pharaoh had a dream and it was a very very mysterious dream it was a dream that troubled him he was so troubled by that dream when he woke up the bible says he gathered all his wise men we're going to read it but just a background and he said what is the meaning of this I'm, I'm i'm faced with a dream here that i cannot interpret that dream you see ladies and gentlemen controls a mystery there is a revelation behind that dream the first thing i may want this is powerful because there are certain levels of revelation you cannot be trusted with until you rise to certain realms the dream that pharaoh had even though he did not honor the god of the hebrews the god of heaven he was the only one who was in a position to do something about that dream 
There are times that God will have to make do with unbelievers because there are no sufficient unbelievers in strategic positions that can allow God to reveal some things. Hallelujah. Which is dangerous. We must never get to a point in our lives where God would have to teach us through unbelievers simply because believers have not accepted positions of strategic influence to allow them host the purposes of God for a season or for a generation. Anyway, but in this case, so Pharaoh has this dream and he calls on the people and eventually Joseph comes and he begins a discussion that will be a lesson for us tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. Please follow me patiently as we explore this dream because the dream is a mystery, a mystery that speaks of a um, a reality that is in the life of all men. Failure to know this will cost you more than you can imagine. Genesis 41 from verse 1. Help us, Holy Spirit. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed. And behold, he stood by the river. Verse 2. It's a long reading. Please be patient. Media, let's walk together. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kind and fat-fleshed, and they fed in the midew. Uh -huh. Behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed. Was just talking of cows or calves. And stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind. This is the first mystery. This is his dream now. Pharaoh has a dream and he's seen two sets of cows. One fat, healthy looking, the other slim. And then in the process of time, remember we're dealing with time, that the lean ones ate the fat ones and never increased in size just went like that verse 5 and he slept and dreamed the second time and behold seven ears of corn came up before one stock rank and good next verse please and behold seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them and the seven thin years devoured the seven rank and full ears and pharaoh awoke and behold it was a dream and it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled and he sent and called for all the magicians of egypt and all the wise men thereof and pharaoh told them his dream but there was none that could interpret them unto pharaoh follow carefully then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wrought with his servant and put me in the ward, in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. He's narrating something that happened. And we dreamed a dream in one night. I and he, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man an hebrew servant to the captain of the guard and we told him and he interpreted to us our dreams to each man according to his dream did he interpret and it came to pass as he interpreted to us so it was me he restored unto mine office and him he hanged 14 and pharaoh sent and called joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream. And there is none that can interpret it. Are we still together? And I have heard of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. Next verse. Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace pharaoh narrates the dream one more time in case you didn't get it the first time let's try it again in my dream he said behold i stood upon the bank of the river 
And behold, there came up out of the river seven kind, fat-fleshed and well-favored, and they fed in the midew. And behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor and very ill, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind, twenty-one. And when they had eaten them up, now this is the fearful part of the statement, it could not be known that they had eaten them. So this is not an issue of hunger now. But they were still ill-favored as at the beginning. So I awoke. And I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came out in one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven ears withered, thin and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it unto me. 25. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream, that fell, the dream of Pharaoh is one. And God had shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The dream that Pharaoh had, Pharaoh, forget about all of the different things you saw. It is the same thing you have seen. Isn't it powerful? Different scenarios, but the message is the same. God had to keep emphasizing to Pharaoh, pay attention, because what I am showing you will surely come to pass. Now, Joseph is interpreting the dream. Joseph said unto, okay, next, verse 26, the seven good kind are seven years. That means the cows have nothing to do with cows. The plants have nothing to do with plants. Can you already see that many people have been making mistakes in their interpretation of dreams? If many of you were to interpret these dreams now, you will be surprised at the many ungodly, extra-biblical interpretations that will come from this dream. Is that true? Most people will start talking about something that God even is not, his attention is not there. This already is a lesson that it truly takes grace from God to interpret correctly. I probably would have failed this interpretation woefully, hands down. Who would ever know that a cow and plants could mean time? He said, what you saw has nothing to do with animals or plants. It is a mystery of time. The seven good kind are seven years. Everybody shout time. Please say after me, years. years. Keep the scripture there, please. Keep the scripture. Keep the scripture. We're still working on it, media. And it says the seven good years are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are also seven years. And the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Now, pay attention. Let's take it again. You are Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And you go to bed. And out of the many, many things you can see from the realm of the spirit, God superimposes your revelations to bring a matter of urgency that Joseph says will surely come to pass. And then you have this dream. And this young Hebrew boy comes to tell you the dream represents two sets of time. Are we still together? That the seven good cows, just like the plants, are seven good years. And that the other one represents seven years also. And here is the mystery. That years can eat years. I understand that animals can eat other animals. Is that true? But I never knew that time can also eat time.
pay attention now. That seven years of plenty can be eaten by seven years of famine to the degree that you would never imagine that there was once years of plenty. This is a very powerful mystery. Please pay attention. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten. Shall forgotten. Hmm. In the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land. 31. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following. For it shall be very grievous. Next verse. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God and it will surely God will surely bring it to pass now therefore let Pharaoh look out for a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt he's bringing a solution now let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up a fifth part 20% of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities and that food shall be for store in the land against the seven years of famine is someone learning already which shall be in the land of Egypt that the land perish not throughout the famine just stop there we'll take it from 37 shortly now please look up pharaoh is receiving counsel from a young boy empowered by the spirit of god and he's sharing a mystery that pharaoh no matter how powerful you are no matter how powerful egypt is god is revealing to you that there is a law the law of seasons that it is a law things will switch it has nothing to do with you being good it has nothing to do with you being bad it is the law of seasons is that true and that in every man's life born again or not this law is not one you can pray out of your life it is established pharaoh what you have is not just a dream for egypt it's a mystery to be given to men that in the life of every man born of a woman the law of seasons is applicable to all there will always be seasons of plenty represented by the fat cows and there will always be seasons of leanness the difference is whether you heed to the advice of joseph or otherwise those who disobey Joseph are about to pay the price with their entire lifetime because years can eat years. Are we blessed? Joseph tells Pharaoh, this is not something you can pray and say, God, change it. No. You see, let me tell you this. When God created the earth, the Bible tells us that he made the stars to signify times and seasons. The law of seasons is a very powerful spiritual law that many believers have not been taught. And many well-meaning, innocent people have had to pay the price because they did not know how to discern seasons. Our opening scripture, Ecclesiastes says there is a time for everything. It begins to list various events, but the consistent fact is that there is a time for them hallelujah yes pharaoh hunger is about to come to the earth famine is about to come to the earth and that includes egypt but you have a chance now there is a season here in africa especially in nigeria we have you know and all of that but then let's work with what we know 
we have rainy season and dry seasons please look up how many of you know that all those seasons have their features is that true yes when it is rainy are we together now it doesn't matter whether you are rich or poor educated or uneducated the moment it is rainy season there are certain things that are given to you by reason of the season the land is soft enough for cultivation you do not need to labor so much to till the ground because the rain has done that for any season why because the season comes with it an advantage of a cool weather you may not go through so much labor to clean and fight dust because the season itself helps to purify the air if that season is done it will switch to another season and you will look at the ground as though water never fell on it is that true you will see the ground cracked you will see wind that was ever green now looks dry and brown and it looks like water never fell there you look at the clouds and they are so clear you come out in the night and you can see the stars not because something else happened to your eyes an advantage of seasons now it is still possible to farm during the dry season but you will have to find a way of outsourcing water to simulate a rainy season during dry season for the plants to grow this is very powerful you can afford to be careless with your car for instance during the dry season your wiper is not working your lights are not working you can afford your tires are not strong you can play all those games but when it is rainy season one night you just come out and without any notification a heavy downpour comes and you see the consequences of not having a good wiper is that true you may not know how wrong you are during the dry season but another season can show you whether you were doing right or not seasons are powerful there are many things you may be doing wrong but just because you have not arrived at a season that will show you how wrong you are you may think you are right for a long time until seasons change and there are times you can be doing something very right and look like a fool for many years because the season that shows your wisdom has not yet come once upon a time the wisdom of noah looked like foolishness because the season of rain had not come is that true he kept putting the animals there and others were laughing at him and said to what end is this but a season would soon come pharaoh what you saw is a mystery that happens to all men that no no matter how anointed no church no politician no government no nation has one season forever oscillating seasons is part of the law of seasons that all men must understand why am i telling you this i'm teaching this message out of a heart of passion and sincerity with, with no sense of sarcasm whatsoever have you seen people who maximize certain seasons in their lives but they forgot that seasons will change and they ignored the advice of joseph until the seasons changed this has caught up with politicians it is terrible to be out of relevance in your lifetime this has caught up with men of god this has caught up with family people changing seasons that no season no season ever remain to a point of penury there are politicians today who were once instruments of awe and honor and because of lack of discernment of seasons they came down there are sincere men of god they didn't backslide but they were careless with the discernment of seasons and today they have been brought down to nothingness pharaoh the dream that you have is deliverance it is a mystery that if you understand will save you the law of seasons is god speaking to us in every man's life there will be this season of fatness and there will be this season of lean cows what do they mean write this down according to the vision 
or the dream of Pharaoh and the interpretation of Joseph, the seven years of plenty represents seasons of ease, seasons of abundance, and seasons of opportunities. The seven years of the fat calves, the seven years of the or the seven years of fat corn and, and the flourishing plants represent seven years of ease e a s e years of abundance and years of opportunities please if you're writing underline the word opportunity seven years of fat cows represent years of opportunity what opportunity opportunity to know god opportunity to maximize destiny opportunity to invest in your life and then the seven years of famine represent moments of constraint moments of inconvenience moments of scarcity the seven years of famine represent moments of constraint moments of inconvenience moments of scarcity for various reasons for instance let's use biological age how many of you agree that by the time a man is 60 or 70 years prepared or not seasons would have changed the strength that you have when you were 10 20 30 may not be there again you may not have that kind of energy again seasons have changed and if you are a worker in this country maybe a, a federal government worker a civil servant prepared or not there's something called retirement is that true the meaning of that is that you may not have the opportunity to go to work and collect a regular salary again the reason why pension works is because it's part of obedience to the advice of Joseph. Is that true? That from your seven years of work, something is kept so that by the time you retire, it will be given to you again. We are coming there. So by the time a young man in ministry, who is probably in his thirties or forties, is now living in the season of a man who is 70, 80 years, a man who may not have the energy to run around and the young man too is doing man of god big man you know what you are doing you are already destroying the opportunity that you have for the seasons that are coming let me tell you this there are many people there are i watched an obituary there is a course in the school of ministry under personal transformation I, I teach the students on something called the graph of life. It's an attempt to give the students wisdom to help them understand the brevity of life to the end that they live efficient and effective lives. Are we together? And this, this came as a result of an obituary I saw. Please look up. In this obituary, it was a two or three minutes um, TV program. And this is what I saw. I saw a man who was in his late 80s now had died and they were announcing but for some reason they were able to gather his photos i don't know how they found it photos when he was a young boy to a teenager a young adult an adult in his middle age becoming elderly an old man together with his grandchildren and then a few moments on the sick bed before he died they ran that slide within two minutes and i saw a man's entire destiny run on a slide within two minutes when i watched that it had an impact on my life and that's where the scriptures so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom and i made up my mind that i was going to build a course out of that experience to teach the school of ministry students that as 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 long as life looks it is deceptively brief there is a hymn that says life at best is very brief like the falling of a leaf hallelujah 
Are we learning something tonight? Please do not take anything I'm teaching tonight personal. It is truth that I will give you. I have seen people in old age today with nobody to help them. They walk alone as though they were never, they never had the privilege of youthfulness. And the question I'm tempted to ask is, what did they do with those days? Because at that time, the lean cows have come to eat up the fat ones. I told you, yes, can eat years. There are people today who retired as directors, CEOs, and yet they may not be able to raise 100,000 with honor. Because during their time of glory, they did not know that seasons change. There are musicians today, respectfully speaking. There are sportsmen today. Once upon a time, if you mention their names, people will stay awake. But today they can move around on the road and you see them and not even care about them. Why? Because seasons have changed. Is that true? Once upon a time, in this nation, when you mention certain names, once upon a time in Africa, when you mention certain names, as powerful as these great men are, look at men like Reinhard Bonke, look at men like T.L. Osborne, look at men like um, Billy Graham. As much as we love them, the truth is whether we like it or not, according to the law of seasons, eventually they have gone seasons that means everybody who finds himself on the stage you better realize someone left there before you got there and realize that very soon the light of destiny is pushing you out now listen there is the deception that comes with these seasons of glory it makes you believe you will never leave the stage for any reason this has deceived men of God. This has deceived people in politics. This has also deceived parents. They forgot that these children will one day grow and they will be young. And they treated the children in an evil way. Many of them today are old and wrinkled and left alone by angry adults who were once babies. There are nations today who did not take advantage of their human capital to invest in the young people during the seasons of power. Most of those young people are now the thieves that cause mayhem in society. There are people who rose in honor. They never raised anybody in their lifetime. They didn't raise anybody from their community they are the only ones, and when the devil attacks them, he got them alone because they had no support system. Learn the wisdom that comes from this mystery tonight. Pharaoh, the dream is twice because it is established. There is nothing you can do against it. You can only build a system to overcome it. Hallelujah. Yes, it is a dangerous thing to once be relevant. It is a dangerous thing that in your lifetime, you are still alive, and yet your life becomes a warning, not a message. They tell people, if you want to go far, please don't use this reference. You are still alive and breathing. Are we learning? So we know that there are alternating seasons in the life of anyone. The moment you see rainy season, rainy season comes with a letter from dry season, I am coming. The moment you see dry season, dry season comes with a letter from rainy season, I am coming. If you receive the season and don't receive the letter that prepares you for the next season, you will be in trouble. The moment you see men celebrating you and saying, wow, triumphant entry, remember, one day the same people will say, crucify him. The moment you see people saying, crucify him, remember that one day John will also stand close to the cross. Listen, if you master seasons, you will remain relevant through seasons. I'm 
speaking because some of you are in these seasons right now. You can be in a season where nobody knows you. You are a man of God who is being made by God. Nobody knows you. No invitation, no fame, no glory, no nothing. And if you do not do anything with that season, the day your season of appearing comes, prepared or not. You see, do you know, once upon in a time in my life, I had the luxury to pray I could lock myself, even if it's for three days, at will, and not come out because I had the time. Today, I don't have that kind of time. If I want to make that kind of time, I will have to go out of my way. Many programs will suffer just because I want three days to myself. Changing seasons. Young lady, now that you do not have children, God says fast for three days. And he said, no, you don't know the days that are coming. You don't know the responsibility of the attacks that can come on your children. You are enjoying the fat cows and God is saying pray. Young man, you want to start ministry, you are moving around with protocol. God is saying nonsense, sit down. There are days coming. You do not know the, the demons that attack mantles and anointings. Prepare. Because where I am sending you to, you will need power in the spirit for the kind of results you want. Can I tell you, don't let people pity you out of preparing for great seasons. Sometimes people can love you too much. They will say, this is too much. This fasting is too much. This thing is too much. They don't know the other seasons coming. God says, I want to take you and give you an influence with kings. And the Lord says, go for another degree. Go for another program. And they say, it's too much. And the devil is deceiving you. And time is going. Don't say there's time, there's time for everything. But let me tell you, there are, when you buy a product, there's something written on the product. Best before. That means if you want to enjoy this product, consume it. Before certain times. Imagine a man of 45 years going to primary school. Yes, no knowledge is a waste. But as far as I'm concerned, if I'm the teacher, that man will not write exams. I will just give him tea and say go. Because I know that he's most likely wasting his time there. When the young people are jumping and rejoicing, that man will be thinking of his child. What is wrong with my child now? Seasons. There are four major seasons in a man's life the seasons in every man's life is broken into four 25 year circles please listen there is the morning stage of every man's life this represents the first 25 years of your life whether you are prepared or not the first 25 years of every man's life represents the morning stage this is the stage where you can make mistakes and go life scot-free. Life will forgive you. There are certain things that should have happened to your destiny at that stage. By the time you are 25 and certain things have not happened, time is already against you. According to God's expectation, by 25 years, you should have found Jesus Christ. You should not be loitering around hoping to guess what salvation is. No. By 25, you should be filled with the Holy Ghost. By 25, you should have mastered the keys of the kingdom. By 25, you should have built strategic destiny relationships. There are many people who got born again at 30. You are already five years behind schedule of seasons. Someone of 18 years can be playing with his life. You who is 35 years, you are joining him to play. Who is foolish? That person can play around with his life and repent later on and still walk within the 25 years. You, that time has already gone. You don't have that time again. First 25 years of your life is a time for massive investment in your spirit, a prayer bank, word bank. That is the time to have a track record of commitment to God. The next phase of your life is called the afternoon stage. The morning stage is the stage of learning. The afternoon stage is the stage of execution. Represents the next 25 years of your life. From 26 to 50 years. 
that is not the stage of rehearsal. If you are still learning at that stage, you are behind time. You are merging two seasons in one. That means you need an extra grace from God. I'm saying it because there are many people, God is telling you that right now, you miss the first 25 years of your life. You are in the second 25 years, but you are still carrying over the, f- the first 25 years. It means you must pray more. It means you must invest more time. An old man of 60 years is sleeping. You too, you are sleeping. Are we learning something tonight? The stage of execution. Do you know in this nation, there are people who became presidents in their 30s across the world. Is that true? Jesus Christ. Oh, I love Jesus. Look what he was doing at age 12. You now understand? Because he knew that destiny is measured in time. At age 12, when his contemporaries were running around and managing the pressures of teenage, what do you think Jesus was doing? He was at the temple with those who had gone ahead redeeming the time. When his parents came to drive him, he said, do you not know I should be about my father's business? That is a 12-year-old child. For the next 18 years, we do not hear of Jesus again. The next time he shows up, he's a 30-year-old man, prepared with stature. And in three and a half years, he finished his assignment and signed it. Till today, nobody has been able to produce that kind of result. 30 years. Imagine someone who gets born again at 45. The time it will take you to know the Holy Ghost. The time it will take you to find a Bible-believing church. The time it will take you to learn the principles of the kingdom. Is God speaking to us? So the second season of your life, the season of execution, walking in the fullness of purpose and your assignment from 26 to 50. The third season in your life is called the evening stage. This is the stage of legacy where at this point you are not trying to prove a point again. It is expected that within that time, that time of your life, the afternoon stage, like the sun shines brightest in the afternoon. That is the stage of maximum kingdom impact. By the time you are 51, down to 75, is a stage of legacy. That's when you begin to build institutions that reflect your value. Institutions that are prepared to outlive you. You are not successful until there is a generation that becomes loyal to your thoughts. You cannot mark your script and give yourself a grade. It is one generation that will tell us whether you are successful. Our success is proof that Jesus succeeded. It is the success of your children that show whether you succeeded. No matter what you are enjoying now, you are still a student. It is when someone comes who is who comes out of you and now succeeds... That is when we will know you have succeeded. Is God helping us tonight? Yes. The stage of legacy. That is the stage where you turn back and begin to mentor and build the generations coming. Teaching them from your mistakes. Passionately pouring your heart and telling them when you get here, even though it does not look like there is a hole, jump it. I didn't know this when I was there and it cost me 10 years extra. Hear me? There are young people today who are sleeping 8 hours in one day. Let me give you an advice. If you sleep 8 hours out of 24 years, by the time you are 30 years, you've slept for 10 years of your life. Sleeping for 10 years at age 30. Can I tell you the honest truth? I say this with every sense of respect to everybody, but particularly to the young people. Be careful with this overseeking comfort at an early stage in life. We have a generation that is so passionate about comfort. At age 20, you are already looking for, I don't, don't, I don't want anything that pushes me. Hi.
You read the Bible for two hours, you sleep for four hours. I can't go until there is a car that moves me around. You have to be careful. I must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day. Jesus himself said it. For the night cometh, even for Jesus, where no man can walk again. There are people today who had an opportunity to have built estates and built buildings that they and their children and their children's children will eat from. But selfishness and distraction did not allow them to know they were getting old. Lo and behold, they opened their eyes and now they are 60, 70 years and not even a single building of residence. I'm not being sarcastic. Forgive me, but I have to teach this. And many of us young people, we spent our lives criticizing men of God, criticizing parents, criticizing politicians, forgetting that we are also coming to that same stage. Many of us are right here and we are messing up even more than those that we criticize. Because the time it takes to prepare is the same time it takes to criticize. While you are criticizing and talking about others, time is still moving you forward. Prepared or not, one day the curtain will be opened. Is God speaking to us now? The year of legacy and the final stage of your life, the last 75 years, is called the stage of rest. Not death, rest. If you started this journey completely at 75 you should almost be ready to finish your assignment, only consolidating and blessing the name of the Lord. There are few people who were able to demonstrate that in their lifetime. One of them was Billy Graham, a man who finished his assignment and was still alive to turn back. Everyone knew that this man had finished his assignment. The mystery of Pharaoh's dream is a lesson for everybody alive that seasons are changing seasons are changing seasons of opportunity will come now let us look at joseph's advice i have to run i wish i had time to walk this genesis 41 37 and the thing was good in the eyes of pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants 38 and Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown ye all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to my watch shall all my people be ruled. Thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. He took his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen. Now, you know that the season just changed for Joseph. Forget about the season for Egypt. Joseph's season just change yesterday you were a young man who would need to beg for water but god took you on the seasons for helping interpret seasons your own season too has changed but joseph make sure you follow your own advice first because that law also applies to you he took off his ring, put it on Joseph's hand, arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, put a gold chain about his neck. Our generation called this, I don't know what, the, I've arrived. That's it there. Ladies and gentlemen, that is that deceptive demon of arrival there. I have arrived. And he made him to ride on the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bowed the knee, and made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand. My goodness. Everybody say seasons. Ah, did Joseph know that one day his bones they would take out of Egypt? Look at a man who is receiving a public global commendation i am pharaoh and without you shall no man lift up his hand or foot 
in all the land of Egypt. Read on please. And Pharaoh, he called Zaphnathpania, and he gave him a wife, Asena, the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Let's go to, okay, we'll read down to 49. And then we'll jump to 53, just to redeem time. Joseph was how old? Please talk to me. How old was Joseph? Why do you think the Bible would add his age? What do we need his age to do? To know the reality of seasons. He was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the land, all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities. The food of the field, which was round about every city, he laid up in the same. Last verse and then we'll move to 53. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea. Very much until he left numbering for it was without number go to 53 and the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of egypt were ended seven years of plenty can end seven years of plenty can end Seven years of plenty can end. Next verse. And the seven years of death began to come according as Joseph had said. And the death was in all the land and in all the land of Egypt. But in all the land of Egypt there was bread. Uh -huh. And when all the land of Egypt was famished. The people cried unto Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph. Go to the person who has the formula for connecting seasons. Go to that man. He's mastered how to preserve bread regardless season. Let me tell you this. When you see people whose results don't change and it looks like they are ever rising, it's not because this law does not happen. They have followed the advice of Jacob. Of Joseph, of Joseph. So even when there is famine, there is still rainy season in their life. And you are wondering, is this rainy season universal? No. They created their own Goshen out of Egypt. Are we together now? Yes. When the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light, it says it because there is an advantage of the wisdom of Joseph to the saints. So what was the advice? Of Joseph very quickly because we have to pray is someone learning something mm. the advice of Joseph was save and invest this is not in financial terms at all just pay attention save and invest save what the first thing to save is time not things you have not really saved if all you save are things. The Bible says, not as unwise, redeeming the time, the most precious commodity to save and to invest is time. Not things, not money. If you lose time and you have money, you lost. Record it as a lost. If you gain things, Hallelujah. And so his advice was save 20% of those seasons and begin to invest those seasons for the days of that reality that happens to all men. You cannot stop the seasons, but you can shield and immune yourself to a point that you and all who are connected to you will not even know that this to sustain impact and relevance based on Joseph's interpretation of Pharaoh's dream. I give you a few keys. Since he said, what do you do 
during these seasons of opportunity that happen to all, there are many of us you are in the heart of that season. Your seven fat cows, your seven fat plants, they are flourishing. But remember that seasons are passing. Let me give you a counsel from the word of God. Number one, the first thing we do with seasons of opportunity is that we use them to build capacity. Your first assignment during seasons of plenty, during seasons of abundance, during seasons of ease, is capacity. Second Kings chapter 4, when you read from verse 1 to 6, this was the story of the wife of the sons of the prophet. Remember, the, it took the union of the vessel and the oil for profits to come. Oil alone does not give profit. It is oil with plenty vessels that is equal to profit. If you have great oil and small vessel, you will still be poor. The woman had oil in her house, but the vessel was small. When you have seasons of opportunity, seasons of health, seasons of youthfulness, seasons where your destiny helpers are around, maximize those seasons to build capacity spiritual capacity intellectual capacity use these seasons to build capacity are we learning so that's the first thing we do with seasons of opportunity number one build capacity your prayer life your word life your time with god because you see there are responsibilities that leadership of all sorts will bring into your life that may not allow you the convenience to do certain things with the liberty you had to do before again. Hallelujah. Number two. What do you do with these seasons? The seven, your seven years of abundance your seven years of fatness. The second thing you do is build quality relationships. Build quality relationships. That's what we do with these seasons. Build quality relationships. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, please. Let's hurry up. We'll read from verse 9. 9 to 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Build relationships. Here's what the Bible says. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. So the two people must not be lazy. The Bible says two of them have labor. Is that true? It says, for if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. Uh -huh. Again, if two lie together, they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Twelve. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. Can I tell you, during your seasons of plenty, your seven years of plenty, that is the time to pray in the spirit and say, Lord, bring destiny relationships to my life. Bring quality people who love me because of me. Quality people who are not just looking for money or titles. Our world is full of people who will prey on you and climb you like ladders to where they want to go. You need quality people. Can I tell you this? Woe betides a man who is full of men but does not have relationships. How many people today have stepped into their dark days and their dark moments and there's almost no one Look at Jesus, your Jesus, my Jesus. When Jesus was on his way to God, got a question. Where were all the people who received miracles from his crusade? Those who had 5,000, um, 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 five loaves and two fish, where were they? Where were all the women who were singing his praises? Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Where were even his disciples? They ran away. Paul so ran away. Paul called a small girl woman because he was running away from Jesus. I mean, Peter. Peter. You look like you have... No, 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 no. I've not been with him. It was only John that stayed when Jesus was on the cross. 
Do not let circumstances choose your relationships. Choose your relationships with understanding. Sit down with the word and with the spirit of wisdom and ask yourself, what kind of destiny do I desire? Ah, woe betides any man when you are in moments. I've taught you this about relationships. That's why in dark days and seasons in your life and there is nobody to call you to say, I hear you just lost this election. But we are standing by you. We love you genuinely. I hear you just lost money. One billion naira just disappeared. Can I tell you, if you need food, provided I am alive, your children will not beg for food. I will keep paying their school fees till you recover. Can I tell you, not everybody is greedy. There are sincere people. They, they are hard to find, but pay the price to find them. Let me ask you an honest question. The first time I taught this message, I asked that question and I want to ask it now. Is there someone right now, as you're looking at me, is there someone in your life you can honestly call for help, no matter what time of the day or night, and they will get up and respond to you? If you don't have such a person, your life is in danger now. I am telling you. Apostle, I am, uh, what they call that thing? Where people like you... Um, they like you, uh, oh dear, I can't remember it now. No, no, it's not photogenic. Photogenic is camera. Yes. Yes. Psychophants. I, there's something in me that makes everybody like me. Think again. Let me tell you. Think again. Men are selfish. When you look like a ladder, you will see many of them. Let them just see you looking like a ladder. And here they come, ready to climb messlessly. There are many of us here right now. The reason why you are almost dying of depression is because there is nobody in your life who can stand and say, let's pray. I came to spend the whole weekend with you because I hear you were bereaved. I canceled all my programs. And you say, why did you do that? Because of love. To let you know there are still genuine people. Genuine people are scarce. They are like gold. Pay the price to find them early. Is someone learning now? I tell you, if you have the wealth of men, genuine men who love Jesus and love you, you are wealthy indeed. Yes. There are people today who may not have connections. They may not have educational qualifications. But God has honored them with the gift of men. They can call and say, please, I don't mean to insult you, but there is someone who is sick. And they say, for you, I'm on my way coming. Do you know your name can be a key or a padlock? Your lifetime is what decides it. There are people today who have changed their names. Because if they ever tell people they are carrying that surname, they'll say, which one? Mention the name again. That other one, where was he in 1971 to 1975? Oh, he walked with railway. Go out of my office. And you, you just refresh a painful wound. And something that was a key becomes a padlock. I forbid your name from becoming a padlock. Is someone learning tonight? Build relationships. Powerful relationships. I may not have the school fees to pay for my child. And someone says, over my dead body, I remember what you did for me in 1981. And I vow that for as long as I'm alive, there are people who have gone to be with the Lord today. But they went to be with the Lord smiling. Because they saw people standing before them that they knew will make sure their children don't cry. And they say, I will live in peace because I know that someone will be there to defend me. There are people who, it's not the fear of death that makes them cry. It's the fact that they know that if, they, if, they, if their breath ceases to die, they will shred their entire names and their families into pieces. Please like what I'm sharing. I'm teaching you by the Spirit. This is what we gain when we come to the house of God. So, all the people you are insulting in your office because you have money, 
All the people you are insulting around. For us young people who are insulting fathers. Insulting everybody. I give you a, I don't know if it's a good or bad news, but it's a news. A serious news. That one day, one day, you will reap from that seed you are sowing. There are people today who are not supposed to have certain jobs. But just because they mention this, you know this man? Let me tell you. In so, 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 so years, and a job interview becomes a long story. And after you talk to the person, you say, by the way, where are you staying? He says, I honestly, as I'm, I just came to Abuja, I don't even know the name of the area where I am. And the person says, go and get him a place at my cost. And you see the person and say, I hope you are doing things correctly. Say, I'm reaping from the benefits of someone's relationship. Be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you treat people. One day the person you are looking down, you will open the door of an office and see him sitting down. And he will say, welcome, you can be seated because from here you are going to prison. Straight. Straight. Give him minerals. As soon as you are done, you are going to prison straight. I know we are laughing, but I hope we are hearing what God is saying. Because God is speaking. There are many people today who are surrounded by men and women who can help them. Can I tell you, when you find out that a man is close to many helpers and yet nobody is helping him, don't be too quick to conclude that the helpers are bad people. Ask questions. What happened? What happened? Why are you surrounded by people who can open doors for you and yet everyone ignores you? Could it be that you are reaping the harvest? Of the seeds you so gallantly sowed. I made up my mind. That I do not want in my lifetime. Let it never be that one day you mention Joshua Selman. And someone says no I intended blessing you. But now that you have mentioned this name. Walk out of here. No. Politicians. One day you will not be in that office. Men of God. Whether Jesus comes or you meet him, in any case, you are going to move. That for sure. Father, mother, the baby you now treat anyhow will be the one to take care of you in old age when seasons change. Young boy, learn to be responsible now. They will not give you money any, every day. A day will come, your father will say, at your age, I was already out. Go out of my house now. And prove, make full proof of your ministry. Maximize relationships. Are we learning? So I, I, I asked a question. That was what led me into this discussion. Is there somebody in your life today who you can call and he can stand with you in prayer? Is there someone in your life today who you can open the secrets of your destiny and still go back and sleep with two eyes closed? That you can tell the person, our family is going through an attack now. And the person says, over my dead body, as for me and my, my wife and my children, be sure that we are awake praying for you. We will pray till breakthrough comes. They will pray as if it's their own child that is going to hell. Do you have such people in your life? Woe betides a man who is alone when these seasons come. The Bible, the Bible gives us a very interesting rendition. There's no time for that now to, to check that. But you would have read about a man in scripture who heard that his boss was going to drive him away. When he heard that his boss would drive him away, he called all the people who were owing the boss. How much do you owe? Let me reduce something. M note my face. Note my face. And when the boss drove him, he called them and said, Where are you people? I scratched your back yesterday. Oh, yeah. My back is scratching me now. <laughs> Even though the reason for relationship should not be selfishness. It should be that you love them genuinely. You have to go and pray this night. And say, Lord, give me the gift of destiny, covenant friends. I'm tired of general relationships. Hmm. 
Oh, really? You don't have a child? Two years, no child? I'm fasting and praying with you. We are getting into this together. No, no, don't worry. I'll handle my... No way. When people love you just because of money or anointing or position, and most people will, that's the, that will be the basis. Can I tell you this? When people are clapping for you before you receive it, look well. Who is clapping? Because some people are clapping for themselves through you. Oh, I'm happy that my money bank is still alive. You are healthy. Are you okay? Because I'm about to ask you for school fees. There is a building project that is going on. I can get you Panadol. I can show a seed. Are you alright? What they are saying is my project, my fundraiser, are you alive? The day they roof that house, if you like, die on that day. And many of us need to be discerning because just because people laugh and celebrate you, you draw them to the holy of holies of your destiny. No. Put a strict spiritual immigration officer around your life. That before you move from outer court to inner court, you must pass that test indeed. From inner court to the most holy place. Just because you meet someone and the person loves you, I said, my God, Apostle Joshua Selman, you preach so powerfully. In five minutes, you've told them everything about your life. Just to let you know that, in fact, my mother is a witch. It's an issue we are still dealing with now. Who asked you? Look at just five minutes. And I'm, are you aware that that shoe, I even why I borrowed it. Come, in fact, let's sit down. And for five hours, you are by the side of your bed discussing things. And the person laughs until two, two weeks later, you find out that the person was actually looking for your enemy. It's just that he came to you. And now you open up several things about your life to your peril. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Let people qualify for access to your destiny. Don't open up the gates of your destiny to just everybody. Love everybody, but don't relate with everybody. No. Association is not by force. Choose it with respect to God's agenda and your destiny. Are we together? And beware of people who want to be your friends without changing their values. Be careful. If you come to my house and the protocol is to take off your shoes, you take off your shoes. You see that? There are people who want to come with their shoes and sit. This is just a parable, not doesn't mean literally. If I come to your life and I find out that your priority is Jesus, I must honor Jesus and it must remain so. I cannot want to create an exemption and yet want to be close to you. It doesn't work that way. Beware of people who do not respect your values and yet want relationships with you. They may be sincere, but they are dangerous people. So number one, what do you do with seasons of abundance? Build capacity. Number two, build relationships. Number three, what do you do during these seasons? Selflessly invest in blessing and transforming as many lives. The third thing you do with these seasons of opportunity, your seven years, selflessly invest in blessing and transforming as many lives. We see this in the life of David. We're about to pray. First Samuel chapter 22 from verse 1 and 2, please. First Samuel chapter 22 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went there to meet him. This was when David was running away from Saul. Look at the caliber of people who came to David. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, they gathered themselves unto him and he became captain over them. And they were with him about 400 men. Can you imagine the level of selflessness it takes to be captain over these people? You, are, you can't expect anything in return from these people. People who were distressed, people who were in debt, people who were already disenfranchised and now he became captain over them. 
By the time we get to 2 Samuel chapter 23. 2 Samuel please, chapter 23. From verse 8. 2 Samuel 23 from verse 8. Their names had changed. They were no longer weak men. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. David turned weak men who were in distress. Weak men who were almost in debt. And he transformed them by selflessly investing in them. Until their names changed to the mighty men that David had. The Tagmonite that sat in the seat. Chief among the captains. Watch this. It says the same was Adino, the Esnite. He lifted up his fare against 800 whom he slew one time. What mighty man. Next verse please. And after him was Eleazar the son of Dodo, the Ahohite. One of the three mighty men with David. When they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away. Next verse please. The Bible says he arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave to his sword. And the Lord wrought great victory that day and the people returned after him only to the spoil. Watch this. Next verse please. And after him Shammah, the son of Agi, the Hararite. He says, and the Philistines were gathered together on, onto a troop. Where was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. We are reading to 17. Watch this. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord gave him great victory. Remember who they were before. Look what David turned them to become. And three of the 30 chiefs went down and came to David in the harvest time. In the cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines. Pitched in the valley of Rephaim. David. Was then in a hold. And of the garrison of the Philistines. In Bethlehem. And the Bible says David long and said. Watch this. Ah, it's good to raise men. David said. Oh that I would drink of the pool. Of the waters. Of the well of Bethlehem. Which is at the gate. And those who he had raised. Say, what did you say? You said you are thirsty. You want water from Bethlehem. Watch this. And the mighty men break through the host of the Philistines. And drew water out of the well of Bethlehem. That was by the gate. And took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, David said you've killed too many people. What warriors? What did I make you become? Don't expect loyalty from anybody you did not invest in. Don't appear in people's future. And claim a stake in their lives. There are many people today who have not invested in building anybody. You just gather successful people and you want to claim their lives. No, sir. If you were there during their dark days, they will remember you in glory. There are politicians who have gotten this right. Others got it wrong. There are men of God who have gotten this right. Others got it wrong. There are parents who have gotten this right. Others got it wrong. May you get it right. Every opportunity God gives you, invest in someone. Some of them will ignore you. Some of them will turn back. Don't worry. You will always find faithful people. Say, we remember. We have pledged our loyalty. Just because you are thirsty, they will pull down with people of leadership. Visionary leaders do not maintain followers. They turn those leaders, those followers to leaders. And like Dr. Miles will say of blessed memory, they will now turn the leaders into agents of change. Can I tell you this? Do not allow a generation pass without having your investment represented there. Some of these children that many of you see and push them in a bid to look for Joshua Selman, they are the next apostles you are pushing. Mighty men. It is my passion that God will think for yourself. I'm raising you for myself. That's already selfishness. That you invest in people selflessly. Can I tell you this? They may ignore you for a while. But the reality of your investment will bring them. One day they will realize that not everybody is that selfless. For someone you can start with your children. There are many pet or bad. They land them outside. So those they are close to are those who fed them. Intellectually and spiritually and otherwise. Mm. Paracos.
Can I tell you this? No matter how anointed I am, no matter how blessed I am, if I go to someone today in the generation of our fathers like Baba Deboe, even if I remove a human head and fix it back as a miracle, they will thank me, but they will be on their way to redemption camp because that is the voice that grew with them. The key to transgenerational relevance is don't just impact a generation, grow with that generation. Grow with that generation. Laboriously invest in the people. They may not reward you, but invest sincerely. A day will come when the presidents of nations will be people who are fruits of your apostleship. Impact them sincerely and watch them grow. Their honor and their lifting is what will keep you up. God does not throw people. He lifts people. Everything lifted is lifted because it is connected to the ground. No matter how high a skyscraper is, it does not float. Anything that floats in the air will come down. Number one, build capacity. Number two, build strategic destiny relationships. Number three, selflessly invest in blessing and transforming as many lives. Apostle boy, you are just talking. You don't know how many children are brought to my house to raise. Almost 90% of them have become ambrobas. Don't worry. You will reap what you sow, not where you sowed. You can sow in Nigeria and reap in US. It's still your harvest. One child among the many who will do well will be equivalent to 100 children. Hallelujah. Invest in transforming as many. I heard a man of God say this. It is better to be kind than to be right. There are many times you will need to prefer kindness than being right. The pressure to prove you are right, it is nobler to pursue kindness. There are times you are wrong, but you are right, but you will still fail. Right does not always mean success. Right does not always mean victory, but kind will always mean victory. Hallelujah. Are we learning? The final thing and then we'll pray. Thank you for your patience. What do I do with my seasons of abundance? Study and carefully follow those who have maintained relevance through seasons. Study and carefully follow those who have maintained relevance through seasons. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. Did I give you a title for tonight's teaching? The law of seasons. You may want to write that down. The law of seasons. It says that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Every time I have the honor of speaking to any of our fathers, or mentors or senior people whether in ministry in life who have gone ahead of me i don't approach them as apostle joshua selman i go there like a sponge like an ignorant person ready to learn wisdom and my goodness sometimes in five minutes they will tell you something that will define the next 10 years of your life let me give you an advice when you stand before greatness don't contribute listen when you stand, don't go and stand before people you know. They are all billionaires, respectfully speaking. You may not have anything yet. I'm very quick. You are, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's not First Bank. It's um, um, Access Bank. How much do you have? Just keep quiet, whether you are right or wrong. Listen and learn. You stand before senior fathers of faith. And they are, no, no, no. You made a mistake. It's Acts chapter 2. I just read it. Whenever you stand before greatness, minimize contribution. Be a listener. It is the secret of receiving from the great. Sometimes what they will say, they may fail in statistics, they may misquote scriptures, don't worry. Adaptation is proof of honor. Just endure. Be looking for what they are saying that can bless them. Mama, how were you able to raise 11 children and the least among them is a professor today? Mama may not be able to speak English. Endure. Just listen to what she's saying. There is a formula that through the frailty of our communication will drop to your hands. When you receive it, you can change your people. 
Can I tell you this? Every time results are consistent, it means they happen by laws. Consistent results are proof that you have gained mastery. Show us the ancient paths. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Lead us along eternal highway. We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter. What is the conclusion? Lamentation chapter 3 and verse 27. The Bible says it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. There is timing. Every time is not the most convenient time. Now listen to me. You see the reason why we pray for things like restoration and things like speed. Because by default, there are people whose seasons are already against you. But these systems of advantage come by the Spirit to help you remedy. Many of you right now, your seasons of glory are almost changing, but you did not build capacity. The time you should be spent praying, you were criticizing and talking about people. The time you should be fasting and building energy in the spirit. Now they have made you the pastor of a parish. In two weeks, you have no messages again. Because the ten years of preparation as an usher, the ten years of preparation as a, a sanctuary keeper, it was not about sanctuary keeping. It was preparation. But you ignored it because your eye was looking at the stage. And the preparation that should happen within that season. There are many clerks today who are governors in disguise. But rather than learning, they are complaining. My boss is a greedy man. He gives everybody 10, 10 million. Men of God come and he gives them 50 million. I am here cleaning and God is saying you will remain a clerk there because of that evil heart. Someone can be cleaning and say, let me listen to the advice. When you become a governor, be a responsible person. And the clerk hears it and writes it down. And someday God says, you have passed the test. Hear me? Every time God gives you an opportunity to serve, he gave you an opportunity to learn. Don't waste it. You will not always be a student. One day, you will be a lecturer yourself. But make sure whilst you are a student, you look beyond the lecturer's limitations and learn what you need to learn. I thank God for today, for the lessons and the privilege and the opportunities that he granted to learn. Some of the people who God used to teach me were harsh people. Some of the people who God used to teach me, were, I mean, they, it was as if they were mising the information. Can you endure so that you will learn and be built? There are many of you, you need to see a man of God, for instance, maybe your pastor or someone, and five minutes you say they are wasting my time. You put your hand in your pocket. What are you doing? Oh, I just started a walk and I just need a blessing or one or two words of advice. You won't rise that way. Already, that state qualifies you to remain like that. I aspire to be a politician. I hear that there are some senators around and let me just hear. You know, these men are even dull. They just read the election. They don't have anything to say. And God says, look at the kind of heart that wants to be governor one day. Can I tell you this? Learn to honor everyone ahead of you. They didn't get there by luck. Just because you don't understand how they got there. When you see consistent results, respect it. Even if the persona of the individuals is not inviting, endure. Some of them are your parents. Some of them are your loved ones. Endure. A woman who may have been, say for instance, a widow for 30 years, and yet none of her children has begged for bread. And you sit down with one child and you are struggling. 
And she says, can I advise you? Hey, Mama, you are old school. You don't know what to say. 30 years? You've heard me say it. I'm both old and new school. It depends on what you are talking about. Sometimes this idea of new school, old school is why people go down. It says, remove not the ancient landmark. Don't change what works. Are we together? Now, I tell you the truth by the God of heaven. The season you now are in, no matter what you think about it, that season will not remain like that. Your victory will remain, but seasons change. If you obey the advice of Joseph, O oh man of God, politician, man, woman, your season can always remain rainy and bright. But just because Egypt has food does not mean the whole world has food. It was one man's advice that kept them. To the point that even Jacob, although he was a prophet, hunger drove him to Egypt. Because even as a prophet, he was not discerning to know. There are parents today who can go to be with the Lord with joy. Because they took advantage of the seasons before them. And they built something worthwhile. To the young, you have time. Look for wisdom. To the old, you have wisdom. Please don't die with it. Let the young receive. When God wants to help young men, he takes the wisdom of the old and adds it to the time of the young. That's how he blesses them. Apostle, but I've made so many mistakes in my life and it looks like time is gone. No, time is not gone. Even if you are Abraham, God is able to make time be restored. Now you see the relevance of the statement, and I will restore the years. Apostle, I am now 45 years. As a man of God, I'm still learning the fundamental rudiments of, of ministry that I should have learned when I was 18, 19. Fear not. The Holy Ghost can accelerate your journey. Apostle, I just got born again when Koinonia started. Where do I start from? All my children are now teenagers. How can I help them? God can help you. That's why He sent us. We represent... The past that you lost. We have come as God's instrument of mercy. Apostle, I lost 30 years. And God says you have gained it back. Now, you may not be able to do anything about yesterday. But you can begin today to be intentional about your life. Intentional about everything you are doing some of you who are in ministry may need to take a break and go and settle down and learn how this thing works rather than shadow boxing and repeating mistakes and failures forever the moment you find out that your life is not producing consistent results do not be ashamed to stop what you are doing and learn some of you right now you are hearing me i'm speaking to you by the spirit do not be ashamed to go back to the school of the spirit and learn you still have time to learn. Apostle, I'm a pastor. God has called me to be a prophet. But I don't know anything about the prophetic. And I'm there misleading people. Find strength, dear brother. Find strength, dear sister. There is still a way. There are many of you who are crying because you have lost seasons. Can I tell you this? You may not be able to do anything about yesterday. What you can do something about today. There are some of you, whilst you are sitting right now, you should go back quickly and look for a further certification quickly because you have two more years left. Don't allow that door to close. Don't allow mediocres to flatter you and say you are alright. Remember your destiny is with kings. Joseph, you are only in the prison for a while. Don't get the prison life put you down. There are men and women of God who need to go for a retreat. All this exposure everywhere. I am a man of God. You need to go down and say, Lord, what is the next 10 years of ministry going to look like? Just because you were relevant yesterday does not mean you will be relevant tomorrow. 
there are politicians that need to go to God. Lord, show me the blueprint. What is Nigeria going to look like in the next 10 years? What are the secrets of relevance for the next season? And God says, I have told you, call unto me. Hear me, men of God. In the next 5-10 years, the dynamics of ministry will not be the way it is right now. Sincerity will not be the only key you need. You need to hear the voice of His Majesty telling you this is going to be the way ministry will be like. Businessmen, you may be doing well today, but the next 10 years will not be the way it is now. Life is in circles. You must master the circle of your season. And then... The moment you are in a season of greatness, build capacity, build relationships, raise men, follow the great. I give you four unbeatable keys. You walk with these keys by the Spirit, whether you are in your rainy or dry season. As for your victory, it will remain untouched. Please rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. Let's minimize movement, please. We're almost done. Thank you for your patience. In one minute, I'd just like you to reflect on everything I've said. Outside, inside, following online, all through today's service. The Lord has come with His word of power and word of grace, speaking wisdom to our hearts. The Bible says the laws of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. Have I wasted seasons in my life some of you are about ending a dry season now you wasted the rainy season until the dry season revealed that you wasted it i told you every dry season comes with a letter from the rainy season i'm coming back some of you god is about to give you another chance with life and destiny can you make up your mind oh samson you lost your hair you lost your eyes but once again the power is coming again. Make sure you do not make the mistake of yesterday. Turn your contemplation into a prayer right now. Lord, show me mercy and help me to maximize the seasons of my life, to maximize the seasons of my days. Is someone praying? Some of you, the seven lean cows, have eaten up the seven fat ones. But God is giving you another dream, O Pharaoh. God is giving you another dream. And he has sent his Joseph to give you the interpretation. O King, the dream that you have seen is one. You saw it twice because it is established. Build capacity during your day. Build relationships during your day. Raise men during your day. Follow successful people in the kingdom. Follow those who have paid the price to, 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 to put a, 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 a track record of consistency. Please pray. Some of you may need to ask God for forgiveness and mercy. Lord, I repent for insulting the credibility and the track record and the, and the, and the consistency of those who have gone ahead of me now i am in their shoes and i see someone pray pray for these four keys in your life please pray them in one minute lord i reject laziness you may pray, I'm still a young man. Hard work does not kill. Diligence does not kill. I receive grace to burn the candles in the night. I receive grace to buy the books and study. I receive grace to submit to mentorship. I receive grace to be diligent, to build capacity. Is the oil and many vessels that equals profit. It is the oil and many vessels that equals profit even if the oil is genuine and the vessels are small profit will not come pray lord bring strategic destiny relationships to my life connect me to genuine destiny relationships relationships that build that i will draw from in the days and the times of need 
Can you pray for the grace to raise men? Lord, let me not only be a receiver. Let me raise men. Even if your children. Let there be someone today who can say, Thank God I can eat because someone raised me. Thank God I am great. Are you praying? Don't waste your political office. Don't waste your office, dear man of God. It is not the cars you are buying. It is not just the anointing you have. It's not just the clothes you are wearing. The man you are raising is your real wealth. Hallelujah. Listen. I know many of you are crying. I want you to go back. Listen to this message again. Everyone. Please just take it as a spiritual instruction. Go back. Go back to YouTube. Listen to it. The law of seasons. And listen to it praying. And find the areas where you are already making mistakes. Because for every one of us here, the dream of Pharaoh must happen to you. You will have seven years of plenty. And you will have seven years where the lean cows will eat up the great ones. You will not always have that person give you money every week. Now that you are getting the money every week, make sure you save and begin to do something reasonable in your life. You will not always have a free access. People just give you access. One day, it will not be as easy as this. I remember years ago, I used to tell my beloved precious people in Zaria, they are following connecting by faith. And I used to tell them those days, my dear people, I love you with all my heart. Listen, one day you will not have it easy like this again. I used to draw me to say, now that you have the chance, ask the questions, learn, receive the impartations. Some paid attention, some didn't. Seasons have changed. When you make the same mistake twice, it means there is a deficiency of wisdom. When we make mistakes once, it's called our humanity. When we make mistakes twice, it's called lack of wisdom. For some of you, I'm about to pray. That's why I said no movement. There is a prayer I want to pray for you. This is where the power of God comes into place. Some of you, the clock has shifted. If you have to wait until it goes round, by the time it comes back, you may be 70 years. The prophetic is able... To take it back again and say lord give me another chance you gave me three men of god three millionaires godly siblings and i wasted that opportunity take the hands back again and give me a chance i will be wiser at this time you gave me someone who was willing to send me to harvard to go and study and he said think about it as though they charmed him i wasted that season Right now, I'm even looking for money just to do a three-day course and I don't have it. Lord, would you send such helpers again? Now I am wiser. Lord, you brought all kinds of anointed men to my life. I wasted the opportunity with familiarity and dishonor. Can you please bring them again? One of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible is that an Adam knew his wife again. Again means another chance. Some of you here hear me. Our time is gone, but this will be one of the most powerful messages you would have heard. You were connected to great business partners, but you did not have the patience to learn. Rather than learning their values and their virtues, you were looking for money. All the discussions, today you would have been a very strong person. I'm sorry to say it, please don't feel bad. There are people who had the opportunity to own lands in hectares in this Abuja. They were in this city where land was one million, five million. Till today, they don't have a plot. There are ministries that had opportunities to buy acres of land. Don't always say tomorrow is there. Remember the dream of Pharaoh.
the mystery of Pharaoh's dream is both a warning and a road map. The ease you have today may not always be so until you program it through your obedience. I want to pray for you. I really came here tonight with a strong burden. I'm not, as, as I'm standing here, I tell you before the Lord, it's only God, is by the strength of the Lord I'm standing here. But it's the passion from my heart. Because I knew that necessity is laid upon me. If I do not teach this, some of you are in an injury time in your destiny right now. Just because nothing has happened yet does not mean nothing will happen. You can choose to correct it this night. Or you can sit and say, it does not matter. Nice preaching. Rema, preach preacher. And then the seasons will catch up with you. Apostle, I had an opportunity when I was put in an office. In that office, it exposed me to relationships. I insulted everybody. And I said, don't worry. Now the person who was sweeping outside is now the owner of a big real estate company somewhere. I cannot even go and tell him, help me, because I am ashamed. Believers, we must be wise. We do not have every time to live on earth. Treat people with caution. Treat people with courtesy. Treat people with honor. You may be a wealthy man. Someone may be around you wearing a shoe that looks like he just got it by the roadside. Don't look down on people because of this and that. Let me see how much do you have. Who is your father? Who is your mother? Be careful. The person who is great has already shown you his future. The one who is coming, you don't know how far he can become. This is why I feel sorry for people who tear down people and criticize. You must be careful. You hear that a family has lost a loved one. Don't start arguing and moving around. Rush there and say, how can I help? You hear that a pastor is in pain. Don't sit down and be assessing and talking nonsense. Rush there. Oh, a woman had a miscarriage. I've always told them, mm -mm. How can I help? How can I pray? Always be there at the point of people's pain. Sooner or later you will forget what I've preached. But you will never forget the experience of this encounter. Edge yourself in the history of men's rising. Let them not forget you. Don't wait until people have arrived and you come and claim a stake in their destiny. They will not open the door for you like that. When you find hurting people, don't ignore them. If you cannot do anything, then keep quiet. But don't add to the heart. Someone is trying to raise money for his house rent. And you are seeing him do his best. All these young boys. <clears throat> if you can help, help. If you cannot help, bid him Godspeed and walk away. Do not let people remember you for evil. Has someone learned something today? Now that you know these things, the Bible says, happy are you if you do them. I pray for you. Please don't kneel, just stand. In the name that is above all names. For every season that you have not utilized well, seasons of opportunity, your seven years that you may have wasted, either as a result of ignorance, as a result of mistakes, I call upon the God of my covenant. And in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God, let there be restoration of seasons for you. Let there be restoration of seasons for you. For many of you, strategic relationships, opportunities to have lifted you today, I call on my God who is your God. Let there be restoration. May God give you another opportunity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Some of you, the Lord is ministering to me. Please listen. There are some of you. Some of your parents are still alive. You have never sent anything to them. It's just to complain. 
You are a millionaire and mama is there. Staying in a rented apartment, drinking water from the well. God is speaking to you. Whether you like it or not, one day they will not be there. Can you give them the memory of joy and glory before they go to be with the Lord? Can I tell you this? Use every opportunity you have now because it will not be there. The hymn writer says, Thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling. He says, only remembered by what we have done. Thank God for cars, but cars will not go with you. Thank God for qualifications, but it will not go with you. Thank God for reputation. Apostle Joshua Selman, it does not go to the grave and it does not go to heaven nor hell. Find the things that matter in this life and commit yourself. Invest in them. And the sons of Issachar, men who had an understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do. Again, I pray for you. Anybody who should be in your life in this season, but lack of discernment took them out of your life, I call upon the God of heaven, may they return back to your destiny now. Every opportunity you lost, either due to ignorance or dishonor, I pray for you. May the God of all grace and all mercy, may he restore those seasons for you now. You hear me? For some of you, you are at the threshing floor. Remember, you are at a defining moment. A few weeks ago, I came with a prophetic word here that people were ending seasons and beginning another one. Can I tell you this? The grace to maximize this season you are in now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the wisdom and the grace. Receive the wisdom and the grace. Receive the wisdom and the grace. Man of God. There may be certain levels of the anointing you should have had by now. But because of carelessness, like the hair of Samson, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, you should have get, gotten into deeper levels of the prophetic, deeper levels of revelation, deeper levels of prayer, deeper levels of fasting. But you lost these things. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Let there be restoration tonight. <laughs> Hear me, those in business, we are wrapping up. Some of you lost opportunities. God gave you opportunities. Today you would have been feeding not only your family, but everybody around you. But you are still at a level where you are begging. And time is going. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the son of the living God. Leave him. Leave him. Just leave the gentleman. Don't worry. Let him be. I pray for you. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord turn the hands of time for your sake. Hear me? Jacob had an opportunity for an encounter in Genesis 28. He wasted it through lack of discernment. He says, surely the Lord is in this place and I knew not. By the time we get to Genesis 32, Jacob was prepared. When that man came, he held on to him. He said, I made this mistake and I paid the price for over 20 years. There are mistakes when you make, even though you are restored, it will take time. I pray for you. Any mistake that will eat up your years. Any mistake that will eat up the remaining part of your destiny. May my God and your God take it out of your life. Some of you now is the time to seek the Lord. You keep laughing at people. Oh, these spirit cocoa people you say. Now is the time to seek the Lord. Because the time will come when you may not have the liberty to do what you are doing. I pray for you. Whatever has destroyed your spiritual fire and your zeal for the things of God. When you were on campus, people were getting born again. You laughed at them. It cost you 10 years. Now God is giving you another chance. Don't wait until 20 years from now before you take Jesus serious. In the name of Jesus, let there be restoration of fire. 
Hear me? There are multi-millionaires today and billionaires. There were times where those people were friends to many of our loved ones. They were giving them free opportunities for mentorship. But they did not listen. And now it's costing them a lot. Some of the bankers, some of the top people today, respectfully speaking, some of them have classmates all around who would have easily taught them. But they fail to maximize seasons. May God restore those seasons for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Koinonia, hear me. I stand by the privilege of God's grace and I announce to you, if there is any season that is about to open up in your life for shame and for destruction, by the mercy of God, we reverse it now. Wave your hands to Jesus and give him thanks. Wave it as an act of worship. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for giving us wisdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now listen to me. Our time is gone. I sincerely apologize for stretching you this long. But I just had to do it. Just give me two minutes and we're done. There is no cajoling. For someone... The season for your salvation is now. There's no need pretending. You know you need Jesus. You are inside and you are outside and say, Apostle, I'm about to end the first season of my life. The first 25 years. Or the second 25 years. Or the third one. Wherever you are. Apostle, I want to run to Jesus and make it right. Or you are saying, I once gave my heart to Jesus, but it looks like things have gone haywire. Give me the honor of leading you afresh to Jesus. Please, let's stand. We're wrapping up. Everyone inside, the overflows outside, please let them come. I'm going to count one to five. Please leave your seat and honorably come and stand before Jesus. Ready to receive that gift of salvation. One. Don't wait for anyone to be the first. Win that war. Come. Run to Jesus. Are there people coming? Celebrate them. Please celebrate them, Koinonia. I must walk the works of him while it is day. Regardless what you have done, regardless how it is, come. Stand before Jesus. He gives you a new beginning. He gives you a new beginning. Koinonia, keep clapping. Let's encourage them as they come. Please, if you're coming, double up. I'm about to pray right now. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for coming. You are hidden to the wisdom of Joseph. Remember, the time will come where you may not have this convenience to make this decision again. Don't wait until you are in a sick bed, unable to talk where you have to use your hand to say, I want Jesus. Now you have health and you can speak. Don't run away from Jesus. He can give you a new beginning. It doesn't matter how you have been. Let no man condemn you. This is the house of God. The family of faith. Lift your right hand high to the heavens. Please say this after me loud and clear. The Lord Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord. Grant me the discipline.